should be good now. Let's see. All right, let's open Photoshop. Let's do it. Um, hold up, let me check real quick. I need to uh, set up some stuff. <coughs> I've been setting up a lot of like back end stuff to, uh, to make sure that everything's kind of working smooth. So there's been a lot of like changes, but hopefully nothing visually from y'all's oh. end, but like my uh, quality of life is like way better now. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, guys. So, all right, guys. Welcome to uh, episode five. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Not, I mean, it's not different. It's the same, same, you know, project feedback, various things like that. But we're going to spend a little more time just on that um, that initial feedback sec section because uh, I kind of want to get everyone up to speed in terms of uh, the people that are participating and stuff like that, and kind of showing you what I think about. Because um, throughout the week, I'll get uh, I'll get paintings and stuff that. Um, you know, people share uh, from various people that are, you know, from participating through like, you know, on stream and off stream. And I'll kind of just send a, uh, uh, I'll send a image back and I'll kind of type some notes. Um, and it's not quite, I guess, uh, maybe, maybe kind of me showing that process of what I'm thinking about and how I process these ideas can kind of help you understand <clears throat> where I'm coming from when I say, say a lot of these things, right? Uh, because, you know, when I look at it, it's like, cool, you know, and then, you know, you get some notes back and then hopefully it works out. But sometimes there's like a mistranslation there. There's like, there's something where um, you're not quite understanding why I'm doing something. And then when you make the same decision later, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's the, there's a day, a connection like usual. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do today. Uh, and a big reason for that is because I'm actually a lot farther in my design than uh, than I uh, thought I would be, to be honest. So um, I'm kind of just like, let's slow down for a second and let uh, some people kind of catch up. And in that time, we're going to kind of just increase feedback just so, uh, you know, people can uh, do stuff. So for those that are following, if you have any paintings to kind of show me, um, you know, and you're in, you're in the live stream in the discord, uh, if you're not in the discord and you're following, you know, definitely, you know, I'd love, I'd love for you to join. Um, you can find it in my, uh, my link tree in my, uh, in my in Instagram profile or even the about me on the YouTube page. Um, join that group and you'll see a, a live stream assignment submission. We're on week, uh, four right now or assignment number four, uh, on week five, assignment four, and then, uh, just submit it and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of give some feedback. So, but let me get some music and stuff started hold up sorry my cat he's been sleeping all day i mean he's like he's like seven o'clock cool man let's uh let's go, just go wild so that was a cat yeah a second ago yeah let's see roadcaster here's that boom connected let's go dude uh music <clears throat> let's turn on are you gonna discord stream yeah yeah i will in a second Okay, cool. Thanks. Sick. All right, cool. Cool, cool. Let's go Discord. Make sure I'm streaming here. Screen, screen one. Go live. Sick. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, with that in mind, actually, let's uh, let's start with Riley. I think uh, Andrea's not here, so it'd be a little bit easier to kind of start start with uh, some of the stuff that Riley's showing, then I'll, I'll come back to Andrea afterwards. That way we can just kind of like run with that one, so. But, uh, Riley, dude, how'd it go, man? Uh, yeah, pretty good. A little bit of a hectic week, but got some designs on for these two keyframes. I had to kind of put a pause on the third one, but I would like to try and catch up on that this week um, and get kind of that level design figured out and block that one out in 3D. Yeah. Um, so for this outdoor scene, I just wanted to start doing sort of this like jutting out bridge edge of the uh, city platform um, that like also repeats into the background there. Um, so I was kind of thinking like I wanted to look sci-fi, but um, I was looking at like a lot of more brutalist architecture mm -hmm. and brutalist sci-fi reference so it's a little like more intimidating rather than like real curvy yeah um especially for like the platform like sort of like power plant refinery bits of it the city up top could be you know a little different but um so i kind of i was digging number one um but yeah interested to see what you thought uh, 
I was kind of thinking a little bit like the shape of like a gun, which was the original idea. Just, I don't know how subtle that is, but mm -hmm. you know, lots of pipes and like metal plating and then trying to do a little of the, you know, big, medium, small areas of detail. And like, there would be little lit areas with like catwalks and things like that. Or so it might imply that, you know, you could get up there, or walk around or sneak up there. Yeah. Sick. Nice, man. Cool, cool. Let's uh, talk about the other stuff. This is the same painting. So we'll talk about this one before we jump in. Yeah, um, so this is the tunnel shot. Um, I wanted to design the tunnel in 3D just because, like, in terms of uh, um, adding, you know, adding elements and geometry with, like, a curve in perspective, <laughs> I thought it would be a lot easier. Um, <laughs> and you know drawing it all so mm -hmm. yeah i was just um I, I, I would like to maybe take another stab or two at it um but i was kind of liking the shadow shape that was coming from like uh bringing like that kind of archway down which kind of I'm not sure it kind of throws off the perfect circle a little bit but i think i kind of like that and then just trying to make it look like a little sci-fi but still keeping some of those like very square uh thick sci-fi elements as opposed to like real curvy and whatnot cool man and then the uh drone as well which i would like to try and build in 3d since he'll be in both uh shots sick nice what's the uh what references were you using for the drone for the drone um so i had a bunch of like concept art drone as well and then i was looking at like you know those um they're kind of like little figurines. I think they're like in Japan, they're kind of popular where it kind of looks like, it's like, it looks like metal stuff kind of all uh, me like meshed together. And then they they're all like it welded like together. Kit, kit bash, kit bash robot or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I was looking at those. And then I also, for the first line, I was like tr you, looking at some animals. The first one was like an owl. And then three and four are like super obviously a bulldog. Mm -hmm. If you look, you can see the face there. Yep. But I was kind of digging number five because I feel like it has a little bit more of like the patchwork feel or it could to it when I do it out a little better and could looks like something you could like customize, I think, a little bit more, which could be a cool like gameplay type element call out thing. So cool, man. This is uh, this is looking fun. I think uh, I, I like where it's going. So let's uh, let's talk about some design things first, and then uh, we'll kind of get into some paint overs. Uh, it's probably going to be you know like you know on the upper half of like thirty minutes. So let's like you know hammer this down and kind of see what we can do to kind of I improve these, right? So um, I think as a whole, right, something that you want to think about when um, uh, let's talk about the uh, the exterior shot first. <clears throat> Whenever we're thinking about our variations, right. Uh, what you want to do is think about how far uh, are, are how how different are these, right? How how um, how unique can we push it? Because this first pass that we did, right, where um, you know we just kind of, we're kind of just exploring. It's like cool, you know, whatever. Um, we're kind of just designing stuff, and as long as it looks like there's something there, you, you usually like you get a pass, right? Uh, but now. Now that we have, I guess, time to slow down and think about it, you don't want to just stick to the the shape too closely because you got to remember, right? We we kind of for we just we we kind of pushed off actually thinking about the design um, in a uh, in an overall sense just because we we didn't we didn't need to. It was about the shot. It was about really the moment. This character versus uh, up there, right? The the city up top, right? And so whenever we're designing this. You know, now we want to think about like, what does this do? You know, what's the point of this shot? What's the point of this mechanism? Because if it's here, it's doing something, right? Like, you know, every every building has something for a reason. And, you know, maybe you can like uh, link that to like maybe a, a dock, you know, maybe there's like vehicles or something kind of coming up or maybe it's a, um, a, a loading bay where a bunch of trucks come in or like a sci-fi hover trucks or whatever kind of come in and like, you know, drop off materials or even load on materials and fly off, right? And so I guess uh, in terms of the function itself, what, what were you kind of thinking what this uh, this thing was? 
Yeah, pretty much uh, that. Like, I was thinking the top would be uh, on the edge, kind of like a uh, like a loading dock or a landing area, or less of like a civilian area because it's yeah. like on the outside of the platform. So maybe only like security or you know like authority would be in that. And then I was also thinking the um, possibly not sure how it would work with the comp composition but like the bottom part of the platform um could you know be also some piping that's like putting out exhaust you know so it's kind of like where the uh power plant nuclear mining you know facility uh meets the city up up top you know yeah cool hmm because I think uh, one of the biggest things that, like, when I when I'm seeing the shapes here, like they're cool. I, I think uh, I think they they work well in terms of like the um, I guess the shape language, right? Like you know they're 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 working okay. But what what I'm looking for right now is how do we turn this into something meaningful, right? How do we create um, an idea that uh, I guess kind of really spells out what it is? Um, because uh, you know just like we were kind of talking about before when it came to like this painting with like the composition, right? Where we have, you know, our guy down here and then there's a thing up there and he needs, you know, there's a symbolism. He needs to get up there because he's from this world, this bottom half versus like the people up top kind of thing, right? There's this thing kind of happen. There's a, there's a balance kind of happening there. And so now how do we describe <clears throat> the function of this uh, with, I guess what we have here, right? Uh, like, you know, Maybe, um, you know, I like, I liked the idea of the gun. That was kind of cool. And I'm trying to think like, you know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe you can th think about like whenever, you know, you know how a gun shoots and then there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a casing that usually ejects somehow. And, uh, maybe mm -hmm. it's like, this is how they, this is like a dumping, uh, area as well. You know what I mean? And that actually might explain this shot. Uh, yeah, this interior shot. Cause now there's a, um, I guess the idea would be he, Maybe he's he's you know going through one of those sewage type areas, right? Because this is how he's got to get in. It's he's going through these kind of um, non personnel access points, right? And so yeah. So the metaphor here is like okay, it, it, it's a gun and it you know expends casings and then they kind of land out and then maybe like those are like barrels, those are like trash. People are just dumping stuff out of it. You know, it's just like they don't really care because that's. This 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 is their problem. This is the poor people's problem, right? Not the not their problem. Um, and so maybe like when you're designing this, you can have more of a um, I don't know, like a like a like a drainage type system look to it, right? Because I think right now it looks it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it, right? There's like I think the designs as a whole, uh, they they look cool. The, 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 the building components themselves look great, but what I want to kind of think about now is how do we explain to an audience what this is? Because if you don't, if you're not there, right, if you're, if you just turn this in and you're like, cool, you know, um, and then you're, you, you know, turn this into your art director or even like it's on your art station, right? How do people know what this is? You know, um, it's, there's a, uh, unrelatable aspect to it. And so that's why uh, I'm thinking about like relating it back to a dock, relating it back to like factory spillage. And you want to like kind of show that somehow. Well, with that being said, I don't know how, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of it as we speak. Um, but that's the, that's the kind of the, the, the mental process that I, that I work through of like, you know, when I'm designing something, I need people to, to relate to it really quickly. Cause like, you know, with these two things, that makes perfect sense. It's a dude, there's a gun, there's some sort of suit. He's probably some sort of like soldier tactical kind of guy. He has a drone, right? It looks like a drone. It behaves like a drone. So it's like, you know, we don't have that exact drone, but we have something that's very similar and it's very understandable. Same with here where like, you know, I don't have uh, buildings and stuff that look like this, but that's how a city kind of feels. And so now how do we bring that same relatability back to this? Uh, maybe what you can do is uh, create a, uh, a system that looks or is understandable like docks, right? Where we have like, you know, maybe there's trucks, maybe there's like activity kind of happening where um, we can show like, you know, ac uh, access points. We can show, um, 
you know, it's like a it's a dock for a whole city. So maybe there's like a bunch like here. Let's let's look this up real quick. Um, let's see, fishing docks, commercial fishing docks, commercial. Let's see, so like you know, I just have I'm just like googling things, and this is um. This is like kind of basically my, my general ideas, you know, it's a general process of, of like troubleshooting these things because, you know, we need something that, that brings us back. Like, look at that. Like, you know, imagine what if your, your thing was like this, where there's like freaking nine trucks just lined up next to each other. Um, or like trying to find out like how they connect and, you know, all those things. Hmm. Cause like, we don't know. Like we we've never been to a, a a a place that's you know like what the place that you're designing right because obviously it doesn't exist but we know places like it and it, you're trying to like capture that feeling you know what I mean yeah so may, and maybe it'd be cool to bring in some you know, uh, flying flying sort of trucks or something as well to add a little more interest to the yeah uh, like upper right upper right side of the composition have a little more like lights maybe like yeah like think about um think about airplane runways you know where uh there's a lot of lights there's a lot of like guiding things uh airplane runway oops <clears throat> cool right it's like you know you're seeing uh, there's certain patterns on 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 the uh on the floor on the ground on the landing strips and then there's lights uh there's um all sorts of different like kind of symbolisms that you know people of that you know uh place would would understand people of that job uh would understand and so whenever you're designing it like look at that where it's you know you see a 36 right it's probably has something to do with what uh landing strip that is right out of you know however many that they have and so you know you're, you're kind of see you, you see these things and you, you kind of create that that understanding right even though even though there's no plan on this right now you're like oh that's probably a landing strip for whatever reason right I don't know how many people look at landing strips, but right, you get the feeling, right? Instead, like, because that's not just a highway, essentially. And so, for you, what does that mean, right? I think the initial shape is good, where we have something, right? But now, really giving this an identity, because really, you have a guy right here, which we'll we'll, we'll be designing, which is great, and then we have like half of a city. So technically speaking, this isn't like the main focal point. You know, we're kind of looking here, and this is probably secondary, maybe tertiary. But the one thing that we can see pretty well is like this thing right there and like um, trying to give us a sense of scale. Because I think right now there's an issue where we have this guy and then we have this um, this city. Right. We know how big a guy is. We know how big a city is. But I'm having a hard time understanding how big this thing is. Right. If you put a if you made a scale from here to there. Right. This is the guy. This is the city. Like, is it dead center? Right. Is this like how far away it is or is it you know closer to here or closer to there and um we want to kind of start identifying that with you know if you had a flying vehicle like this big right you're like oh, okay that's pretty big right but if you had a flying vehicle like this big you know it's a lot closer now and um just little things like that can really uh, can really help spell it out for us you know what i'm saying yeah definitely cool so the main thing the main thing that uh um just to bring across the the shape languages look cool but what i want to see is uh how is this relatable in any sort of way right how do i uh how do we include things that are very realistic for for the audience to like grab hold grab hold of because once they know like oh that's a dock i can see there's like you know you can even literally like write like dock zero five don't start at zero one don't do that but like you know <laughs> dock three or something like that or whatever it is and you see it on the side maybe there's lights maybe there's like some sort of like uh, activity happening and you know you have this guy kind of approaching like there's a whole life happening outside of this person standing there right <clears throat> sick and then after that you know maybe uh set dressing some of this area to kind of represent some of those things that we were talking about where like oh if there's like you know if it's like a gun with like bullet casings right there or the idea the metaphor behind it it'd be maybe it's you know there's like barrels just kind of scattered throughout like kind of half buried the ground looks kind of dirty and stuff like that right <clears throat> so that's that's how i would start approaching this 
Um, the, the shape languages look cool. I, I don't have too big of a worry, but I will come back to that in a second because once we uh, talk about the two different factions, uh, we really want to make sure that we have a strong identity for each shape language, right? Because now you're creating two different, two different groups. You have the city people here, right? The, the richer, or I guess the, you know, the higher class people or their buildings. And then you have these people. And depending on what you're kind of doing, we want to make sure that they at least feel distinct enough, which they, they look, it looks like it does. It looks like you went for a rounder form language here, which is good. Um, and just really identifying like what those references are. Um, and maybe we can have a little bit more of a realistic r reference uh, tied to this because right now it's like, it's like sci-fi to be sci-fi. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. <laughs> cool. Awesome. But yeah, man, I think this is cool. I liked, uh, when I saw these two specifically, I was like, oh, that's kind of sick. I like the, um, uh, the function of this, uh, <clears throat> of this, uh, uh, I guess drone or it looks like it it's like a like a you know like a sniffing dog right where it's like they're kind of like tracking things so i guess uh for for this what's the um uh what's the intent behind this drone what does it do so the um i want the since the ip is robin hood mm -hmm. um like just stealing some sort of i'm thinking like money and like energy possibly in the form of like small energy things that are used um like little canisters or something like it that that's kind of like how the world runs uh it's like almost like an economy um and then so the robot the drone would be like assisting in any sort of like infiltration with like the scanner might have some sort of like attacking ability but nothing like too heavy duty um Cause, uh, and then also would be able to like fly away with like whatever you could steal, like whatever it could carry. I was thinking it could be like kind of like a limiting factor. Like you might find a bunch, but maybe your dr drone could only fly away like a little bit of it. Um, yeah. I was thinking the drone could be named Little John, like Robin Hood and Little John. So I kind of thought that would be a fun thing like to try and give him a little bit of personality that's why i was thinking the dog yeah um because then it's like it's still a drone looks like kind of like mecky and you know a little military but if he could have like a little bit of personality not like cute but you know with an, a name like that something that in the game you would be like attached to a little bit yeah it's like a it's a it's a character not just a robot right yeah exactly dope cool man i think um i kind of like I, I like a couple of them where like i think the idea behind it is cool maybe um maybe a, a different dog might might help uh you know depending on like kind of you know whatever um i guess activities or tasks <clears throat> that this uh this drone really occupies right because Whenever we, th whenever we see this, we kind of, you know, like I was saying before, you want to relate it back to something. Like, I think this one, it kind of gives me like owl vibes, right? Which is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. It's like a different type of predator. It's very, uh, it's very silent. I actually saw a video on, on owls the other day where it's just like, it's just perfectly quiet as it swoops in and like grabs this mouse. It's like, it was terrifying for the mouse, but like, it was cool seeing like how it operates and like, you know, having a drone like that would be kind of cool. Uh, and then having, you know, cause they, there's this, um, there's this connotation with owls, right? Where they're a little bit smarter. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like a, like a pigeon, right? There's, there's a difference between those two birds. Um, and so like, especially with like the, the dogs too, right? There's certain dogs that probably do certain things a little more, you know, uh, tracking dogs, you know, um, like bloodhounds and you know various various dogs like that and you can like maybe bring that that symbolism in somehow i think that would be a, a pretty cool i guess next pass to kind of hit you know what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. cool hmm in yeah, terms of that good good <clears throat> um I was, yeah i was thinking that like in i was thinking about kind of the difference in the shape language and like the look of the two factions because right now i just threw in like a soldier dot png you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but in in the final thing i would like the, the like this guy and the robot to look a little more like 
kind of like a more of the post-apocalyptic look, you know, like not so many resources, not like tactical gear. Maybe he has like, you know, like a fur coat type thing that looks cool or maybe some more cloth. And then the, the drone might look a little bit more like pieced together. So, cause I did like one a lot, but I think if I did do one, I would probably want to redesign it. So it didn't look like suit. So sci-fi. Cause that almost looks like more advanced than the bridge from mm -hmm. the last keyframe. Yeah. I think once you start hitting the organics, once things start curving, that hits that, uh, like that apple aesthetic or hits that like um the yeah that uh what is it this is zaha hadid uh architecture type where it's like just super futuristic feeling <clears throat> cool hmm yeah i agree i think um i i think there's a like so for example i think what's happening here is like these sections because you have like this curved circle where it like kind of like it bends or it feels like it bends like a almost like a wing in a sense uh but it, it's like the 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 drone like i guess propellers right and then like versus like the curve on here this feels like chunkier it feels like almost like a helmet right and it's like it kind of loses that that um that's that's that sci-fi-ness that this one doesn't have like you know this one doesn't, doesn't have as it doesn't feel as futuristic as that one right so i think that's kind of successful right. or like these two um I think, um, hmm, maybe, where does this, where do the pieces come from? Yeah, so, I mean, either it would be, like, you know, the people, the people not on the city would either be maybe taking stuff like repurposing materials, or maybe they do have, like, you know, some amount of tech, but nothing, like, it's nothing that's like fancy is up there. I haven't really hadn't thought about that like a crazy amount yet. I did yeah. also consider like maybe this drone could even be like a repurposed or like a hacked or something drone from like maybe these people don't normally have drones or yeah. like that good of stuff. So maybe it's like a hacked drone from the city. I don't know. There's a few things I was thinking about, but hadn't really settled on anything and i guess the design kind of would push it in one way or the other yeah like it, you know it could be like old military gear where like maybe this guy was you know uh like part of the military or something maybe back in the day um and this is like you know they've they've changed they've you know they've advanced like think world war ii versus you know na stuff nowadays right um and you can like kind of start piecing together this story right because that's the biggest thing whenever you see um these props these items especially when it comes to like shantytown type stuff where it's like very pieced together post-apocalyptic um you know then your your form languages kind of really do say a lot about you know whatever whatever this thing is um mm -hmm. so really really no like solutions here but just kind of thinking through the idea just a bit further um I, I do like where it's going. <clears throat> I'm wondering, because um, right now it just feels like a dog face, which is which is cool. It's not bad. Uh, I'm trying to think like you know how much how much of that representation do you want? Um, you know, I think I think there's a there's varying degrees of like how uh, how much of that animal you can kind of bring into the into that design. Um, I think yeah. for now. I think it's it's in it's it's going in a good direction. I think just narrowing down. Okay, so where exactly is this thing from? Maybe this is his old robot from some other thing, or you know what I mean? It's maybe it's pieced together where like these kind of uh, propellers or you know um, the I guess the the wing system is like designed or like made by someone else, and it's like kind of stitched in there somehow. You know, various things like that. Um, yeah, that could be cool. Um, but it really does come down to like just showing us um i guess uh a uh a, a history you know what i mean uh, and that's where i think your design is gonna gonna kind of be a little more intriguing you know what i'm saying yeah for sure yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited about working on on that one then because i did like it a lot especially when i made it and yeah. then when i came back like a little bit later i was like oh that just that is literally a bulldog's head. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so if I can figure out how to tone that down a little bit and maybe using like some real identifiable 
like older so i guess it would be like now you know military parts yeah and maybe that could help to give it you know take it away from that direction a little bit but still keep the you know the the deep influence yeah i think if you kept like this part you'd still probably read i think the eyes maybe if you just kind of like pushed like made it a more solid thing and then like you know it, it kind of still it'll still maintain that same kind of read uh or at least the, the general shape you know i think once you get rid of eyes or rid of something that feels like eyes um you have a little more leeway when it comes to like how this thing is like kind of portrayed you know um but then now you can like think about maybe the, the floppy ears or whatever they are and that's like you know that's a uh, um part of that uh part of that i guess design for the like the, the the top the top view or whatever it is right um something i want to bring up because you're scanning right now okay so think about it this way if you have a dog right and he's you know let's let's imagine this like he had a, it's like now like nowadays where you know you have military or, or or police officers with with these dogs that kind of like you know sniff around and kind of you know go lead the pack essentially right um how would this drone do it if there's a dog influence in that right how would this drone do that and is that what you want to do right because now you have like animation and gameplay or i guess visuals that you know like you can do it this way where it looks like it's like kind of a bird and it's creating like almost a sonar effect right where it's creating that 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 laser um that it is kind of scanning as it flies or maybe it's like it could be like lower to the ground kind of shooting out whatever it is um, but you know, think about that story because everything that it's doing, it can be a really interesting way to design out this, uh, this, this prop, this, or this, this, I guess, character in this case, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, whatever it's you end up picking, like yeah, right. It's, I mean, that could be cool or, you know, maybe, maybe you do, you do like it better in the air, but I just want to kind of bring that up because, um, just so just so everybody knows, as you're designing this, right, these images that we set up, right, from week, um, you know, weeks one through four or three, right, um, they're just suggestions. It's like, m this is mostly what I want, but the idea is going to develop. You're going to change things. You're going to make things better. And um, as you kind of, you know, think about this idea deeper on a design sense, that's going to change your story in some sort of way. Uh, so just be open to that idea and it can be uh, pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Sweet. All right. So let's get into this painting. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Hmm. What would I do to this to make it a little bit more? <laughs> it is hard because I like, because I did do a painting on this not that long ago. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you yeah, worked on the city a little bit. Uh, let's grab some of this. <clears throat> what um, what region is this? Like where where like if you were to place this on Earth right now, where where are we? I was uh the original idea was like some sort of uh, American uh like um mountain region like either the rockies or possibly uh like alaska or maybe even like the pacific northwest like more mountainous region something like that so cool hmm what happens like um whenever we're looking at this right what happens when that pollution hits the ground like is it just like just a barrel of toxic right or is it like um does something i don't know like does it affect something does it infect people or does it change anything at all just just curious yeah um i was trying to think about that a little more because i had it like spilling out of the pipe a bit in the other frame so that might be something to like try and try and play with like try it maybe it just like maybe it's just like a classic you know pollutant type deal or maybe it's just, maybe it could be like destroying some of the yeah life or like really causing damage I, I was when you were talking about the disposal idea i was thinking like maybe another idea could be to like play into the pipes more and like bring those 
more into the buildup to the docking structure. And then you could even maybe like reference one in the foreground and like show some of that destruction. Not sure. Yeah, I think I think for me, that's kind of what I'm missing where I'm like, because right now it's like it's it actually doesn't look that bad. You know what I mean? Like it's like uh, you're kind of like looking at this, um, uh, I guess, the structure and I'm seeing the visual pollution of like the sky and stuff. But I'm like, just imagine like, dude, you're like walk like I kind of want to show, um, I guess, how it actually happens, like what's actually happening here, you know? Um, you know, some of the, some of the piping that's like just leaking something and the ground looks all gross. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly how I want to do it quite yet, but I'm just like, I'm just thinking about it and seeing what, um, uh, what, what can we do to, I guess, increase the intrigue here, right? That, cause now we have the main story. The, the whole point of this is this first shot, we have like the first kind of like initial read where it's like, okay, that's pretty cool. But now it's, well, you know, how do we create that secondary, tertiary, you know, stuff like that, just to make it uh, a little bit more um, impactful, right? Because now the audience is going to look at this. The first read is like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's uh, that's a good idea. Let's continue, right? But now, what are we continuing? What are we adding to this to make it, you know, uh, 10, 20% better, right? Uh, let's see. Cool. Those trees, I need to grab those. Can I do this? Hold up. So I'm just trying to isolate some of this just to see what I can uh, come up with. Something like that. Hold up. Sick. Oh, let's go, dude. All right, hold up. Nope, not that one. And like for everybody, right? Um, I kind of want you to see how many questions I'm asking. We're having, we're having like a full conversation here. And the reason for that is because, you know, it matters, right? These these questions that I'm, I'm wondering about, it really sets up like, you know, what's uh, what's supposed to be going on here because that's that's what we do, right? That's um, that the, the whole image here needs to say something and the audience needs to be able to kind of at least, you know, I guess kind of interpret that at least a little bit, right? And so whenever you're coming up with your um, your designs, uh, really just start asking questions like, what's that? What's this? How does that work? And because if you don't know, if you can't answer that yourself while looking at the painting, um, you want to be able to, at the, at the very least, um, kind of start hinting at it, you know, or like you want to kind of start figuring out like, what is all that stuff, you know, because there's there needs to be a story here. Um, because if there's no story, there's, you know, you're just looking at nothing, essentially, you know what I mean? Cool. Mm -hmm. Got that one. Let's see. Boom. And I'll just select that guy out. Boom. This drone looks sick. I don't know, like uh, the way it is right now, the way it looks in this shot looks pretty cool. I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's just yeah. that round language. It's just like a real, it's a real, like a real drone. And then I feel like the gun I added from somewhere else or just like drew on there. Yeah. Cool. Maybe I should just uh, <laughs> make it a little more like that one. <laughs> there's always there's, there's always that um, I guess I don't know that that inclination, right? Because I think there's something about it, and this happens to me all the time. Where you know, like like I'm saying, there's like you can add, you can change things as much as you need. But then there's like the, but it was also pretty good. You know what I mean? It's like it also looks kind of sick already. So I mean, up yeah. to you. But uh, but yeah, that's. It happens. Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's no reason I couldn't bring in, like, some of that shape. I mean, this is just, like, a silhouette, basically, so. Yeah. I could bring in some of those silhouette, I, uh, the sh like, the in interior design ideas into this silhouette more. Yeah. Nice. Let's see. Cool. So, first thing I want to do is I want to kind of start, um, I guess, just creating a little bit more atmosphere back here. I think um, I'm trying to... Like I've been trying to just get the, I don't know, the the painting a little bit more obscured, uh, but in a clean, a little bit of a cleaner way, just because these clouds, this atmosphere gives us, um, let's say, I don't know, like a little bit of intrigue. It's like, oh, what's that over there? And you can't really see anything. It's, you know, you're, it, it's obscuring our vision, but it gives us, uh, it kind of lets the imag imagination run a little bit further, right? Um, and then creating that depth between uh this thing and our guy right like how f how far how far back is some of that stuff so 
Uh, now, hold up, let's see, boom, boom, something like that. Yeah, it's like a little bit bigger, so let's see. If I just did this, lighter color, boom, that's kind of cool. Let's do that. Sick. Okay, let's grab this color. Cool. Um, let's try, let's try, hold on, let's do this real quick. <clears throat> Something I like doing a lot is just like grabbing pieces, because right now it does feel a little bit flat. I'm just trying to like, I want to see like more, uh, more of that bottom, right? Just like, you know, just underneath the thing a bit more, just so it, uh, it feels, I don't know. Like we need that bottom plane to, for the, for the volume to make sense, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Try that, and then I need some Z depth. Maybe, um, maybe some things like that go this way. Maybe there's like some sort of railing or something. I don't know, like a gantry crane. That'd be sick. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Let's see. Boom. There's that. There's that. Lighten this up just a hair. How big were you thinking a, uh, a cargo ship is in this? Um, I was thinking that this was decently far, so that like, um, in more close to the city, like on the scale you did before. Oh, um, it's it's pretty. I mean, it's but, tiny. So if I if we came in like that. That'd be that'd be like yeah, a truck. So that, I feel like that looks more, a little more epic. I mean, we could definitely play around with the idea of it being closer as well. Um, Sick, cool. Let's try that. Let's see how it goes. Um, I feel like if it's small like that too, it kind of uh, it's like it's cool, but and but it doesn't like pull too much attention away from the rest of it. Yeah, if it's too big, it it, it starts to feel. Um, I don't know. It's like. It, it, it kind of has that gravity to it that it just kind of really makes people like st stare at it a little bit too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sick. Let's try. Let's have more things coming in and going out. Let's try that. Pow. Let's do that. Let's try this. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just like playing with it. Cause right now, to be honest, I don't even know where, cause a lot of times whenever I'm doing this, I don't know exactly where I'm gonna go with it, but I'm just slowly trying to answer one question at a time, right? Where we have, um, you know, okay. I think the first thing I saw was, oh, okay, scale, right? We just need some scale cues just to understand it a little bit deeper. Cool, we got that. We're start or we're starting to get that. And then now it's, you know, start uh, identifying, you know, all uh, some other problems that we may or may not have. Um, and then slowly we kind of start checking that, checking that off our list. Let me grab one of your, uh, which design were you leaning towards? It was probably kind of like, I liked one, like one. Cool. So yeah. I mean, if you think one of the other ones are better, I, I, I liked three as well. Um, I guess there's kind of different, different things about them. Different, uh, different strokes for different folks. Right. Let's see. Boom. Let's, let's get that. How? All right. This is the uh, this is the uh, the ultimate way to just include detail. How, dude? It's freaking done, man. There's <laughs> nothing left. All right. Let's see. Let's get some of that. That's kind of cool. Let's get rid of this piece right there. I like those lights. I think those work really well. I think um, it's like because you have that uh, that running light, right, 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 where it feels. I don't know. It feels like there's some. You know, you're um, you're supposed to follow it somehow. You know. Um, let's take this back a notch. Pow. Let's do that. Let's grab this top plane. Uh, 
saturate that just a hair. Let me add in some atmosphere effects. We should be pretty close. Dude, freaking. Nice. It's nice too because like now all the all the uh, the line drawing kind of just creates a uh, a more um, sophisticated uh, uh, like it almost feels like occlusion shadows, which is really nice. So Let's yeah, so I might not even really need to do any three D with this one. To be so honest, kinda... yeah, you. Pr I mean, okay, so you can right. It's uh, you know you might you could do that because you might want uh, other views right. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, when you're looking at a side view or something, if you're only ever going to do this one view, yeah, chances are you probably don't, you probably don't need that, uh, that, um, 3d to kind of go with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I use your painting to continue the painting. <laughs> Too easy. Genius. So, I know, man. It's, uh, it's like my, it's like the trick I'm most proud of. I'm like, dude, there's not enough detail here. Oh yeah, just keep crunching it down. <laughs> and all the details work out themselves. Let's see. Boom. And it's cool too, because now it's, it, you know, we're repeating a lot of that form language. We're getting all that, all this like cool juicy detail in there. Um, and now we just, you know, oh shit, what's that? What's going on here? What do I, why do I like that? Uh -oh. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's see. What does that look like? <clears throat> uh, Michi asks, uh, hey, Kenny, uh, or, Kenny, how does the assignment you got going on your streams work? Would I need to start from the beginning and catch up uh, to the recent assignment to get that crit? Also, what's your favorite way to drink coffee? Oh, shit. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so for the assignment, for everybody, right? Uh, not even just Michi, but for everybody. Um, the the way that you get on the uh, the way that we want to crit on the live stream like you know we're getting like actual like full you know notes just like what we're doing here is um you have to submit the week that we're talking about it right so like for example this week we're talking about designing props and stuff which you know which is what he what he did or we, we did some variations and i'm trying to like integrate it back into the painting and kind of show where i would add things to, and, and and where i would think and stuff like that right um you have to submit that week so let's say, for example, I gave last week, I gave that homework, so you would submit it this week, right? But if, you know, for everybody that's kind of joining at different times, um, you can still get crits. It just won't be during the live stream for like some of the older assignments, right? Because uh, some people have been submitting those and I'll just, I'll type back notes and stuff like that. Um, so if you want to kind of be at the same pace, uh, you do have to kind of submit uh, the one that I'm talking about because, you know, it, we can't just kind of like go back all the time, right? Um but yeah, you, you still will get crit. It's just, you won't get it during the live stream, which, you know, maybe some people are cool with that. Maybe you're not right. So, uh, but yeah, that's how, that's how, um, you would do that. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. <clears throat> and then, uh, favorite way to drink coffee. I've been liking cold brew lately. I, uh, I make my own cold brews. So that's, that's been fun. Uh, it's cheaper too, uh, which is nice. Cause you know, they, uh, they'll ask for your firstborn. If you get, uh, if you buy coffee at a place, so, you know, there's that. But uh, I have a, uh, I have an espresso machine. I, every once in a while, I make some, uh, some better, I guess it's just espressos for myself. So it's been nice. So, yeah. Let's see. Oopsies. Not that way. Cool. Integration. That's what I'm talking about. Where is my atmosphere? That's my trucks. Sick. Dope, right? Dope. Um, now, at this point, I'm gonna start kind of figuring out, like maybe this, I feel like this foreground needs something. I feel like we need some depth because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like, I guess, sideways movement where we have a lot of like things going left and right. The trees, the perspective of the trees goes left and right. The uh, the overall, and the, the overall image has a, has a left to right feel. But if we can have just something that goes this way, and I kind of marked it out here where I, I kind of added these brush strokes, but just something that does that, 
right? Something that makes it feel like he's on a path or it doesn't have to be like an actual path. It just has to be something that leads us that way, you know? Um, so I'm going to find some reference. Uh, lucky for me, I, I do have a bunch of snow reference right here. Snow, ice. I'm working on a, a thing right now that requires things. Can't say too much about it, but, you know, snow's, snow's one of them. Let's see, something like that. Bro, dude, it does itself, dog. <clears throat> All right, we got the shape in there. It kind of what I'm looking for. And then let's darken it down. Oops, rasterize that, darken it down. Uh, it's too blue. I need some. I need to go teal-ish. Darken this down. Lighten this up. Uh, let's bring in some teal blues. There you go, dude. All right. I feel like this is needed right there. Maybe it's like um, some sort of, I don't know, path where people can walk or like maybe it's just like a, I don't know, a, a part of the, um, a part of the, uh, the hill or whatever that just happened to be a little flatter. And that's why, that's why he's currently there, you know? Um, but yeah, there's some just, sort of difference in texture that makes it give, gives like a reason to why you'd walk in that spot versus another. Yeah, exactly. Right. <clears throat> cool. I think that's working out okay. Maybe something like this. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Cool. Let's see. Let's try that photo again. Boom. Because you know I'm going to keep doing this. Hold up. Uh, let's try that. Rasterize. Um, let's go cool man i think um I think I'm just missing like texture. I'm just missing like, cause I think the snow and stuff, it just needs like a little bit of something. And I'm just trying to figure that out right now because <clears throat> the biggest thing is this hill doesn't feel like a, uh, you know, I'm kind of missing like some of the uh, uh, various, I guess different types of snow. This piece doesn't look that good. Um, and then after that it's now, how do we set dresses to make it feel like a stage, right? Just trying to make it feel like there's, I don't know, something. Uh, maybe there's like smaller somethings over here. Maybe uh, I can grab some of these trees as well. Do some of that. Get that in there. Oh, sick. Because I want this tree, these trees to go back here. And that's going to give us a little more scale. Something like that. It's going to go in front of this thing. Because... more depth exactly yeah it's like little things like that yeah. really they really do yeah. go a long way um yeah, let's try this darken those down a bit because those are closer now i'm like trying to find spacing right um to get some of that and then in front of that i'm glad i took the time to cut these out so well <laughs> now i can just use them again oh yeah man i think like that's uh it always like i don't know it's just, it's just that that foresight of just like just, I don't know, just taking your time and cutting out these assets. Like, you know, that's why I kind of spent, you know, maybe a little longer sitting there cutting it out. Cause now, right. It's cause even though it's not my painting, it's, uh, I, I just, I, I guess I have a, I guess a little more freedom to kind of design, uh, the way I normally do, you know, um, mm -hmm. and you can kind of play with it more. You can, you know, adding more depth becomes a lot easier. Cause it's just like, Oh yeah, throw something in between Le levels out your values just a little bit to make sure that everything looks halfway decent. And then from there it's, you know, easy peasy. So let's do that. Let's turn on that opacity. Bam. Let's 
you guys go behind this thing. Can I back up? Sick. Is that a cloud cloud brush or an image? It's a cloud brush. I mean, it it was an image, but uh, yeah, it's a cloud brush. It was just a uh, a, a cloud PNG that I um, I use for various things, and I kind of just like throw it in wherever I wherever I need some atmosphere because I like that bottom half a lot where it's like kind of semi transparent, and so it's really nice for just various like less airbrushy kind of uh, graphic pushes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, we've made this joke before, but. You know, people online do the like the one Copic marker or one Copic marker sketch or like one paint color sketch. I'd love to see you do a painting with nothing but a cloud brush oh, in your bro. like lasso. That would be so funny. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny because like because you know how I paint, right? Where I use lasso tool and like just silhouette fill and all that. So it'd be so easy. I guess like, like you'd have to take away the lasso tool for that to be like an interesting uh, <laughs> challenge. Just because it's like, because you know, I just make a lasso tool and then fill it all with clouds. But right, maybe maybe for April first, you give us a painting like that. <laughs> maybe, I um, I wanted to do a fun painting. I, I don't oh, shit. Like I saw this this like cancerous meme. It was disgusting. Like like that's not. It's not something that is consumable by humans. But I saw it online. And it was basically this, uh, if you guys know what Dragon Ball Z is, um, I mean, who doesn't, right? But it was this fusion of like Thomas the Tank Engine and Goku, and it looked like just disgusting. <laughs> it was weird. It was like, I was like, why am I here? It was, it was a, a lot of it was like, I'm, I think it's getting late kind of kind of feeling. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, I'm in the bad part of the internet. And I was like, dude, wait, what if I just like painted that? What if I just like straight up made that look cool? And then, like, my, my gears started, like, turning. And I was like, damn, I got to do a live stream on, on my project now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Cool, cool. What else, what else we got here? Um, I feel like... Darker color. Let's try this. I think right. sometimes when I'm working on a keyframe, like after I come up with a solid idea, especially like in the early earlier stages, and then like build it up, like it's 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 good enough to like look at small, and then like it needs more to be finished. It's sometimes it's a little hard for me to like really go in and start changing things aggressively if you know what i mean it's like yeah. almost, i get a little like tied to what i'm seeing or like what what i have is like you know i can see what it's supposed to be and it's hard to like make the changes that are you know going in another it's yeah. not really another direction like this is the same thing but it's just you're pushing it more in different areas that i probably would avoid ah oh. yeah it's tough i think i think you know, I think a big reason, because it's not mine, right? <laughs> it's like, it's not my yeah, painting. Yeah. So I'm able to like, you know, say good luck and then hand it off, right? But um, yeah, it, that that is something that happens a lot where, you know, you really do want to, I guess, I don't know, like just be less precious with these designs because, you know, I guess I understand, like it, it happens to me all the time. Um, that's that's something that I always kind of fight with uh, when, when, it, when it comes to my own paintings. But I think... Once I started realizing that, I was like, oh, I mean, I guess I can just paint it again, right? It's like, you know, even if I like messed it up, even if I, you know, for one, you have other versions, right? There's there's older, um, you know, V1s, V2s and stuff that uh, can be very, uh, I don't know, you can like bring that back pretty easily. Um, once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, cool. It's, I can just, I can just run from there now. You know what I mean? Like if I, if I ever did take something too far, if I ever did mess it up, um, I would probably be okay. You know what I mean? And yeah, I think I know that like logically, but yeah. it's, it's just like something I, I don't like that about the way that I like approach things. Like I try not to, but it always kind of comes back because it's like, 
you can see like what you want to happen from like where you're at with the thumbnail or whatever and then it's like oh but this is what i'm adding now is like not as cool as i think it will be i don't know or something like that it's kind of annoying <laughs> ah gotcha 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 cool. i'm trying to like add this uh like this plate i don't know i'm trying to think like this big saucer type thing i don't know what it is but like I just feel like, I think maybe it's my Final Fantasy VII instincts kicking in, but like, you know, the, because uh, whenever there's this, like, I don't know, this city above, like, that's that, that's what I'm thinking about whenever I'm designing stuff like that. It's, it's like this big dome that kind of like, when you're under it, you, there's just no light, right? There's just nothing because, you know, it, it's being covered, it's being hogged by the people above. And I, I, I always find that kind of interesting, but uh, I keep like, I keep like coming back to it for some reason. Let's try this. Oops. Sick. Nice. And this is like now I'd probably start um, adding atmosphere, kind of smudging things because now it's not adding atmosphere, just smudging things, smudging edges, because there's a lot of, like, I don't know, kind of things in there that aren't as, I don't know, like, as, as cool as they could be. Um, but because it's all smudgy and it's all blurred, it's it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to let's do mm -hmm. this real quick. Warp that. Let's go, like, oh, shit. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Hold up. Let's try that. Screen it up. Oh, let's go. Hold up. Uh, boom. We're going green. Yeah, green. Maybe. Hold up. Let's try this. Mask out some of those non-kosher <coughs> places. Let's see. Get some of that. It's like a whole just hinting game. It's like, how do I say it without saying it? I just say just enough to where they're like, okay, I get it. Boom. And for like a finished final keyframe, um, using this kind of bashing with like a little bit of painting in there, uh, how like much refinement do you really need? Like, because like I personally, I, I like the way that the the dock area looks. You know that you did now. Yeah. Like, how much more would you need to push that in terms of like rendering detail for an image like this where it's kind of far away? So. To be honest, for this frame, <clears throat> I would uh, the only thing that I would actually do is increase scale cues. So, like for example, um, looking at this, uh, looking at that dock, for example, right? It's you know I think the the interior shapes are really nice because you know I was kind of bashing them in and you know I, I did the thing, uh, but then like these kind of edges here, that's where I'd be looking for a lot of detail silhouette work, um, little mm -hmm. kind of cues uh, to kind of make that I don't know just a just just a little bit better, right? Um, and then after that, I'd probably leave it pretty similar because the reason for that is because I would probably have a call out of this, right? It's, you know, you're probably going to be doing a, a separate um, 3D model or like, you know, generally speaking in, in production, there would be like a 3D model or something that kind of gets you, you know, just most of that, like most of that design because the design is not the goal here, right? It's like... You know, we're looking at it, we're looking at a thing, but the whole point is the feeling of the scene, not the design itself. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a little less important that uh, you really render out that completely because when you're showing a keyframe, you're trying to inspire, right? Just like we talked about, um, and you know, making sure every little detail is there is not a hundred percent important. Like it is important to kind of get a, a good quality, but as long as you hit that certain quality, you'll probably be okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And a lot of like keyframes for their, that work in this style, I feel like they don't really, they don't always go like a hundred percent with it. They leave, you know, leave some of that artistic flair in there a little bit. Yeah, because you know it's not the point. You're not you're not using this uh, keyframe to build the scene out. You're using this to help understand the world, and then from here. You know, you'd have like, oh, yeah, what's that city look like? And then you send whoever the 3D model or, you, you, you know, you do the thing. And uh, that's generally kind of 
where I would kind of uh, flex those rendering skills, right? Just like how we did um, in, uh, uh, I think it was like the last stream, it was the, that windmill, um, not the last stream, the last last year's streams, is that windmill um, kind of thing. It's It was in this shot, it's whatever. But in my, um, I did that call out, which is a lot cleaner and a lot more figured out and stuff like that, right? Yep. Cool. Sick. So it's getting pretty close. I think, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of me just kind of noodling around, but it's like, I'm just figuring it out. Just seeing like, I need scale. I need uh, indicators. I need just various little things to kind of give this space uh, a little bit more intrigue. And then from there, right, you can just kind of uh, kind of render, you know, render it all out screen, uh, render it all out, do, do what you need to do to make it, you know, look sick, right? So, so let's see. Dope, man. Hope that helps. It's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So it's looking pretty cool. I, I do. I, I like where it's going. It's just like now we need to figure out what uh, some of these uh, buildings are doing. But after that, dude, it's uh, mm -hmm. pretty good. Let's see. Let's flatten that out a bit. Let's see what happens if you go darker. No, that's too dark, right? That's too dark. Or is that dar dark enough? That's kind of cool. Let's try that. And then like smudge some of this stuff out because some of those edges don't look nice. Boom. I think some of the textures that you're doing for this kind of sky, I think maybe, uh, I think the colors are cool, but I think maybe um, getting getting rid of some of that, um, some of those, uh, uh, I guess, uh, artifacts and stuff is going to help this uh, clean up a little bit nicer, you know? Mm hmm Cool. Yeah, maybe if it's a little darker, um, having the suit glow could, you know, have a little bit more of an effect in oh, that yeah, dude. snowy area as well. Yeah, that'd be pimp. That could be pretty cool. Dope. Cool, man. But yeah, this is looking sick, man. Let's see uh, see where we're at. Where is this? Um, let's go. Where are assignment four? No, three. At the top. Copy image. Paste. Something like that. So, so I think like overall the image looks great. It's just like, you know, uh, I just kind of beefed up that city a bit more, gave it uh, a little bit more dimension, a little bit more um, scale in the back, you know, kind of darkened down some of that, the, some of that background is like super bright, which I mean, I, I guess it could be pretty cool as well. Uh, maybe kind of focus that if you, if you do focus that towards the guy, that way it's like, you know, there's like a, there's like a, yeah. a, a better uh, attention grab there. But I think, dude, it's looking pretty sick. Especially, and that's your design too. So, uh, overall, like you can see how quickly it all comes together. You know. Yeah, that's cool that you could just drop the sketch in like that, and then turn it into like a make it look like a painting so fast. I have not tried that before. Oh yeah, cool. man, dude! Like, if you for, for everybody, if you just get the silhouette looking good, like because right now, all those details that you already did, I kind of just converted to uh, converted to my detail, and like. You know, things, when you're looking at it like straight up like this, you, you can't do that, right? Where it's, you know, when it's just like this. But when you darken it down, right, it starts it starts looking like form again. And all I really had to do is make this top plane a whole, like, uh, it just had to look like a top plane. So I just kind of, you know, use the dodge tool and kind of brighten it up just a little bit. And automatically you're like, oh, it's already a painting, you know? It's like little things like that, especially when we're far away, uh, really do a really do a, a, a big, um, uh, it, it kind of does a lot of work, you know, so sweet. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to give such a long crit. It's yeah, super man. helpful. Cool to see all the stuff that you did with that. Yeah. And I, I hope like, and then, you know, I, the reason I wanted to do this is cause like, I, I wanted people to kind of see like the questions that I ask some of the things, cause so, some of this stuff actually does kind of get, uh, uh, just kind of skimmed by where I'll, I'll ask like one question and I'll just kind of go in whenever we're typing or something. But like when it's the, this is, it's the conversation, right? Cause this is really what happens when you're at, when you're in a uh, production setting, right? Where it's really of like, you know, they're going to be like, Hey, what's that? You know? And you like a good, art, like generally speaking, a good art director, or a good lead, whoever is going to ask you things first because, or I think they should, because um, it's really annoying whenever they just assume like, oh, you know, like, oh, that's that's wrong. And you're like, you even asked me what it's about, like what I was thinking. It's like, oh, that looks like it doesn't ha have anything or whatever. Uh, but a good one will ask you like, hey, what are you thinking there? What's going on here? 
Um, and then we'll kind of like brainstorm it together because, you know, it's a collaborative process. And, you know, you're the one that uh, are, is currently thinking about the ideas. And I'm bringing up questions that I'm finding as I'm looking at this thing. Um, and then once you kind of get uh, those questions answered, things start looking a lot like they start looking really thought out. Right. And that's where uh, we kind of want to be. It's just um, people inherently know. Uh, what something is supposed to be like, what something is, uh, you know, because we, we live in this world where we see things like this, you know, not 100%, not like 100% like this, but the same general idea. And we want to kind of pick up on those context clues as much as possible and understand that, you know, people, people will, will kind of be wondering this because, you know, it's just going to be in your art station. So uh, people aren't going to like be able to ask you these questions, you know? So. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, great work, dude. This is uh, it's looking really good overall. Just think through the designs just a little bit further, and uh, whatever you end up picking is probably going to look pretty sick, you know? Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. I'll send this back in the uh, the Discord later, too, after, after stream. If I don't send it, just remind me, but I'll send it back to you. Yeah, don't want to lose that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We had one more. Let's, uh, let's do that. Um, cool. Let me see what Andreas sent. He said, um, cool. Present more options. Wait, hold on. It's complicated. Okay, cool. And I don't know if I present more options or better elaborated options, but I feel like this presentation is only to present ideas or final designs. The, the design is focused on the design of the pillars and the portal. The materials to use are stone, metal, chain, wood. I wanted to focus on two main things, one simple without being overloaded, and the other more loaded with elements that enhance the narrative uh, and enhance the Japanese theme. I hope to refine the design with your feedback. Cool. Sweet, sweet. Let's see, what are we looking at here? Um, boom. Cool. Are right, we looking at eight variations here? Sick. Hmm. <laughs> I need to go back and see what the idea initially was. Hold up, let me go back a couple couple weeks. <clears throat> um, week one, let's try that. No, oh, that's it. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. I think um, I like I like the I like the designs. I think the, I think they're looking okay. I think something that I would think about right is like you know this looks like because uh, this is a gate right, and then there's that um, if I'm not mistaken, there's that demon that pops out of it, uh, or you had the you had the you had the arm that pops out of it like you know in in one of the shots. I don't know if it's this one specifically. Um, hold on, let me see. Let's see. Okay, it's a door. Now, I just want to make sure that the concept and everything lines up before I start giving some strong feedback. Transform. Alright, cool. So, um, whenever I'm looking at the designs, right? Um, I think there's some there's some cool things happening here. What I'd want you to think about is, you know, what is happening, right? What's the what's the intent behind this? Because some of these, you know, I think um, could be pretty cool. Because, like for example, like I like you know the 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 intention behind, let's say, like this one right here, right? It's pretty cool. Um, it, it looks like there's chains and it's like holding this boulder. Like it feels like there's something in that boulder, or you know, that's the kind of linchpin that's kind of you know what I mean? Like this, it's being contained. There's a there's a shackling effect, right? It's it's all wrapped up and tied up, so it feels like it's holding that thing. Um, you know, so it feels like there's an intent there, right? Or this one, it feels like if you kind of like this is like a key or something where you unlock this and then all the chains kind of come out. It's like a different intention. You know what I mean? Um, and so whenever you're designing these gates, these doors. Right. What I want you to think about is what's supposed to be happening here. Is this holding something back? Is this, 
um, you know, what's the, like, when I look at it, I should know that if this thing breaks, you know, something's going to come out of it or I can go into it, right? Because this one kind of feels like a, like a, like a gate that I can walk into. I'm supposed to go in, you know, this one feels like it's holding something and it's going to come out. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, there's a, there's a balance that's kind of happening with, with a lot of these elements and you want to create that symbolism, right? It's kind of like when you see, um, uh, you know, like doorways and stuff, you know, that one's an entrance, one's an exit, or, you know what I mean? There's like, there's, I don't know, there's some sort of feeling there. Or you feel like there's a room that you shouldn't go into, like an employee's door, employee's only door versus, you know, the restaurant's front door, right? You know, uh, obviously I'm linking this back to like just random doors, but the idea is you want to be able to kind of create that idea in people's minds because when they look at this, they're, they're supposed to be like, oh shit, I get this. I understand what's happening here. You know what I mean? Um, so with that in mind, <coughs> I'm going to, I'm going to take one of these and see what I can do with it, right? Because I, I think I like the overall idea, and now I'd love to kind of refine some of these, uh, some of these, I guess, moments or some of these things that are kind of happening. So, uh, let's see, which one do I like the most? Hmm, let's go with B. I kind of like B. I think B could be pretty cool. It feels like uh, I'm going with the idea that um, you're uh, the, the the demon door that you had from previous weeks. Obviously, you're not here, so I can't ask you uh, on precisely what you were uh, thinking about. So, you know, forgive me on that. But, you know, this is uh, this is kind of how I'll run through the idea with you, right? Um, let's see. Let's go like this. Pow. All right. So I think the, the major thing that I'm kind of uh, responding to right now is that there's too many uh, smaller rocks. I think if we can kind of narrow this down a little bit um, and group them a little bit tighter, you're, you're, you're probably going to be in a better spot, right? So I'm copy this, get that all squared away. Um, it's kind of, sorry, I got to cut some of this out. There it goes. <clears throat> Oops. Oh, uh, since we're doing a crit that uh, with the with the, the the person that's not here, uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely, uh, you know, I'd definitely be down to talk uh, at this point just because, um, you know, we can we can do that. So just as a heads up for anybody that's has any burning questions. <clears throat> Let's see. Boom. Let's grab some of this. And I'm just going to separate the ground out a little bit. That way we have some, uh, I don't know, just a, a couple different levels to kind of play with, right? Boom. Um... Let's grab, I'm gonna erase some of these rocks. We don't need all of them, right? Actually, I like that rock. I don't like these rocks as much. Let's see what spot heal can do for me. Nope, can't do shit. Oh, there you go. Let me get rid of all that. <clears throat> Boom. I think like some of these, um, we just need to group them a bit tighter, right? I think where like, I think um, some of them have some potential. Like some of them look pretty cool, like some of those rocks. But I want to create a, a, a system. You know what I mean? Like, because these rocks are coming from somewhere, um, generally speaking, whether they're lifting up or something. So whenever you're showing that, you want to kind of make sure that we're, um, you know, presenting that idea in a, in a logical way, right? Because... You know, just like we were talking about with uh, the kind of door and everything, the, the, the idea of the door, you know, there's little clues that people will latch on to in your scene. So you want to make sure that you're like, oh, okay, I, I see how that might happen. You know, I see where those rocks are coming from, you know, um, and that's, you just want to make sure that we're, we're kind of maintaining, I guess, a, some sort of semblance of an idea here, right? Where, you know, there's, there's a logic kind of happening in your scene. Let's see. Just getting rid of some of them. Will I do a collab? So Earth asks, will I do a collab with Anthony Jones? He usually streams art at this time and is open for collabs. I mean, if you guys can get me a collab with Anthony Jones, that would be sick. <laughs> I think because I was a student while he was like also already a high end professional, I'm just kind of like, I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know if that's in my wheelhouse, but uh, 
I mean, if he says yes, I mean, you know, I'd love to talk to him. <laughs> so. You let him know I sent you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think like, I think collabs are cool. Um, you know, I think it could be interesting. Um, maybe, maybe we can set something up with, uh, maybe I can set up an idea uh, towards like the finals, right? Where like we have some projects to kind of look at. And then we can uh, have like a professional kind of come in and, and, and like look at them and crit them and stuff, right? Um, just because, uh, you know, if it's like random, like, like this week, for example, it's like kind of random. So it's like, you know, maybe a collab is not as necessary, but you know, like the final week or not the final, like not that it's going to be the last one, but like the final for like whatever project that we're currently working on, we could bring in a professional or something like that. I think that could be pretty cool. You guys better show up. I mean, you know, I can't be like calling a professional and I have how many, how many views, how many people are watching right now? 12. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't have that. It's gotta be, it's gotta be 50 or above, right? If we do that, I'll call, I'll call whoever you want, you know? Um, but yeah, if it's, uh, if it's like 12 people, I'm not wasting their time. Not with this casual stream. <laughs> All right, let's see. Lighter color. Let's try this. So right now, I uh, I like what's happening. I and I want to set up the um, uh, I want to set up the the atmosphere first, just so we have maybe something uh, a little bit uh, a little bit of scale kind of bringing us back in, right? Um, and then from here, you know, how do I start making sense of this scene? So, oops, oops, not that one, not that one. There's that one. Nice, Kylo Legends is gonna be there. Appreciate that. All right, let's see. Hmm, what could be happening here? So let's say, let's do this. Dude, what if the chains were like breaking? You know what I mean? And like we have like pieces of it just kind of like strung about, right? We just have like pieces of it kind of going. Boom. It's like, imagine this, where I have this uh, this big rock here, right? What if it's like the portal is like inside of this thing somehow, right? Like, I don't know. It's like, it got covered. It got, uh, I don't know if you guys watch Naruto, but <laughs> it got, uh, I don't know. It just got a bunch of rocks kind of got pulled into that center, like a gra gravitational pull. If you watch Naruto, you know what I'm talking about. But um, it's a... Uh, and, and it's like starting to break, right? So now we want this, like, it's like mid break whenever we're showing this. Like, dude, that'd be sick. Let's see. Boom. And like you have this basically perimeter right there where you would start showing this thing kind of breaking apart. Maybe like some of this rock. Oops. Uh, some of this rock. The chains are starting to be missing. Cool. Maybe it's like cracking. Oh, dude, let's go. Hold up. That'd be pretty sick. Let's go from here. Um, now, what are we gonna do with some of these, uh, I guess, bigger, I guess, rocks and chains that are kind of floating around? So I'm gonna kind of like, just imagine like it broke and then there's like a bigger chain kind of just like, I don't know, like either coming down or floating around it, I don't know. And like you have this almost like orbit, like it just kind of pushed everything off of it. Boom. Obviously, use a chain brush. Don't don't do what I'm doing here. That's if you're not doing a chain brush. Chain brush on this, bro. You're messing up. But I think your chain brush is a. It looks like line work. It looks like a line work chain brush versus like a value. Uh, try to when you uh, when you do this, try to make sure you like have something that kind of feels like um, uh, a little more solid. That way, it's you know you're you're not messing with like having to paint chain links. You know what I'm saying? That'd be that'd be kind of cool. Really easier on you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you do however you want. Some people like doing that kind of stuff. 
I am not one of those guys. So guys, how's life? How's uh, how's it cracking? There's a lot of people in the uh, live stream hangouts not talking. <laughs> Hi, Kenny. What's up, dude? How you been, man? Dude, it's freaking uh, seeing the uh, the the level ups. Freaking uh, freaking awesome, man. The the paintings look sick. I think uh, some I don't know some big I don't know I've, uh, maybe because I haven't seen your work in a while. I think it's uh, some big uh, level ups I've been seeing. Thank you. Appreciate it. I recovered from the COVID, so uh, it's, I feel a little more up to sniff. Came back stronger, yes. like a Saiyan, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that boost. You need, needed those, that break, I guess. <laughs> it, it's funny. I think uh, something happens to me a lot. I am uh, chronically overworked. <laughs> and so, like... I'll have times where I'm feeling pretty like shitty about my work and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take a break, do whatever I need to do. And then, um, after, after like a second, after I get that break, like I'll do something, I'll be like, you know, I'll just be painting like normal. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh shit. Like, dude, what, what happened? You know, it's like something like clicked something. I don't know. It's something that I couldn't initially figure out. I just all of a sudden figured out it's a, uh, it's a nice feeling, you know? So, I am uh, feeling a little more confident just playing in silhouette, maybe like drawing and then using the loose drawing as detail, like what you were showing with Riley. Where oh, I'm dude. I was kind of discovering that a little bit on my own uh, this week. Dude, hell yeah, man. I'm not quite sure. That's, uh, it's funny because, I, cause I used to do a lot where I used to be like, oh yeah, I got to paint everything. Like you draw, you do the drawing and then you go redraw it kind of thing. Right. And it's just like, it's, um, it takes a lot of work, <laughs> first of all, just to kind of do that. Um, but then, you know, I, I think, I don't know where I, I forgot where I learned it, but like, I just like took the line drawing and then started painting on top. I was like, oh shit. It just, if you... If you kind of just like treat it accordingly, if you treat it like a like a normal silhouette kind of thing, it really does um, kind of just handle itself. It's 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 wild. <laughs> Sick. I've seen. Um, I think one of the best that I, I want to try to emulate. I just have a hard time. Is uh, Nikolai Lockertson? Who's that? And, Oh, you don't know him? Look he he. Um, Can you send me he's a link? been around for over a decade. That's the. Uh, he does a lot of demos in Procreate, right? He does. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Procreate. But he's just an amazing painter. He he can he can paint, you know, without an underdrawing, and it will turn out amazing. Photo real, super stylized. He can animate. Um, he he does it all, but the the process that he often showcases. Is a super quick workflow to complete compositions where it's a mixture of drawing with silhouettes and drawing like masses. So shadow sides or like if you have a hole, you you draw in the mass of that hole and then he integrates it in with values. So he's half drawing, but he just turns it into part of a value afterwards. So he 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 keeps the drawing stage um, part of the painting. Rather than having it separate. Wow, oh, yeah, that guy is a pro. I think um, for me, it's it's that same idea, right? Because I, you know, there's when I when I was first starting, it was a lot of like, a lot, yeah, like like you're saying, a lot of separate steps where it's like you know you're drawing and then you're painting and then you you you're, you're like switching gears, and then I think once I kind of figured out that it's all the same, you know what I mean? Like it's it's all the same thing. It's, it's just, you're just image making, you're just creating, using values to tell a story, whether it's, you know, through lines or whatever, it's still like a value of sorts. And so, you know, I, I, I started putting those pieces together and when I was doing a lot of sci-fi stuff, it helped out a lot too, because, um, fantasy stuff, it's a little bit harder. Not that it, not that it's impossible. It, I mean, it's very similar. It's like 10% difference. Right. But 
because um, sci-fi has a lot of cut lines, I was like, dude, I have to like draw out all these cut lines. But then I was like, oh, just take the drawing and throw it on there. And then as long as the shape is within the value that you need, um, you're probably pretty close. <laughs> And it's uh, yeah. it's it's such a relieving, um, I don't know, experience, because now you're like, oh, I don't have to draw as much anymore. Or it t- it takes like less time, you know. Mm-hmm. Dope. Oh shit! Did I let's merge, let's merge that down? Now turn that back on. Cool. So, uh, what I'm doing here, right? Uh, just as I, uh, so I, I first started off by just rearranging some shapes, right? I'm just kind of, um, you know, I got rid of some of those bigger blocks. And then because I, whatever I'm trying to paint, especially in my scenes and stuff, what I'm trying to do is make sure that every thing that I add, right, um, kind of does something. Because, you know, you can have a bunch of rocks in here. You can do, you can do a lot of these things. But if you're not doing it with purpose, it can kind of feel chaotic. So in this case, what I did was I brought all of the attention to this thing here because this is this is where the magic's happening. This is the this is the most important section. It's this thing currently breaking, something's happening. And then, you know, you have some rocks kind of I was like maybe there's like I don't know, magic or something kind of like the ground is kind of lifting. You know what I mean? There's like something happening. And so you want to show that. And then what I'm doing here is I'm keeping it all within this section right here. Because now you're gonna fo- you're gonna get this rock and you're gonna follow it back, you know, you, you're gonna see this rock here, you're gonna follow it back, and it leads you to this kind of main area. Um, and so, you know, if it's not important, if it's not something that is uh, a a super structural part of your painting, um, don't worry too much about it. I guess uh, um, I guess showing up because you know it. You just need it to kind of help you tell a story, but you don't really necessarily need everybody to kind of like really see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, uh, it's not as necessary. And then now I'm just kind of adding atmosphere to kind of separate some things and, you know, do what I need to do to make that look sick. But that's the idea, right? Uh, using elements like this to, to kind of lead the eye because it's not a focal point. So it doesn't need to be, um, I guess, the thing that everyone looks at. It just needs to be there enough for them to kind of get the idea. Let's see, copy. Boom. And then let's kind of grab some of this stuff. Oopsies, not that. Boom, airbrush. I'm gonna bring in some light. Um, I do, I mean, the way you have it right now, I would probably advise against that. Uh, you have, it, it's a white background. It's probably more focused on design and stuff, um, which is cool. I am, uh, I'm trying to make sure that uh, the idea that we have doesn't get overpowered, right? Because right now you have um, something coming in, like where you know there's a there's the shape, there's this you know explosion thing about to happen, and just making sure that we kind of like uh, capitalize on that moment. Maybe a darker scene might be better. I know you have some darker scenes in the previous thing. I'm just kind of working based off of this because this is what I have. Um, so just as a kind of under, just as a heads up, as you know, as you're as you're going through your paintings and stuff. So. Lighter color, boom, let's try this. Oh, sick, cool, man. It's like, just imagine like the calm before the storm. Like that's, that's kind of what, what I'm doing here where I'm thinking about like, you know, there's this thing about to happen or it's like, like, like it just started to happen. This is chain reaction where I guess, you know, pun not intended, there's this chain kind of breaking and it's creating this like, I don't know, this kind of energy ripple or whatever. And you start seeing all these uh, these chain pieces kind of breaking up and you see the ground start to lift, right? And I'm imagining if this if this is a moment here, right? If this is a uh, if this is an event, maybe there's, I don't know, uh, like a good 10 more seconds of this event happening, right? There's going to be an explosion, there's going to be a whatever, but we're giving the audience just enough to kind of see, you know, like, oh shit, something's going down, right? Like, it's kind of like that moment whenever something's happening and then you just noticed right because you know the first the first couple seconds you're always like you know doing something you're always like looking at something else and then it's the oh shit this thing's about to blow or this thing's about to you know do what it needs to do right so cool but yeah man i think this is looking pretty sick you know just uh i think the the idea that you had before it was just a little bit busy right it was just uh there's just so many rocks and stuh 
um, and I'm trying to bring the attention back to our main, uh, our main thing, right? It, which is the, the main rock, right? Um, so any elements that you throw into the scene, make sure that we try to lead it back, right? Uh, whatever, whatever you end up picking, just like what we talked about earlier, where it's like, try to, try to read the intention behind, um, what's happening here. You know what I mean? Like there's a thing, there's a gate and you, I want to be able to understand if it's safe or if it's dangerous, if it's a good event or a bad event, right? There's a feeling that's going to happen. And the way you kind of design like this rock or these things is how we kind of make that happen, right? There's, there's going to be an intention behind some of these things, right? It's, if it's tied up like that, it feels like it's all locked up and it's like it's containing something. Or like this, it feels like it's almost just like a normal door, right? Or like a, a welcome gate. And so now tell that story through what's happening in your scene and uh, you should be uh, pretty good. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, man, I hope that helps. <clears throat> cool. All right, guys. So let's save this out. Uh, save those notes. Uh, that, save it. Cool. Close that. All right. I think we're good. Let's see. I won't save that. I don't need that one. Let's check this out. What's what we got in the chat? Nope, nothing. All right. So, just as a like, the, uh, just as a, for everybody kind of showing up uh, for a uh, you know just showing up late or or whatever it is. Um, the reason I kind of wanted to go a little bit longer in the crits today, right? We did you know about an hour and a half for two crits essentially. It's because you know there's a lot that kind of gets skimmed by whenever we're doing this. Um, you know, I'll kind of ask a couple of questions and I'll kind of start running. And especially like whenever I'm giving crits inside of the, um, the Discord, uh, you know, there, there sometimes is a back and forth that we don't really see. But these questions that I ask, it's, you know, it, they, they kind of tell us what to design, right? Um, it's like, you know, what's the intention here? What's the feeling here? What, is it, what am I supposed to be experiencing? And I'm a lot less concerned about the form language. The reason I say that is because the form language um, is dictated by the function, right? Um, it's dictated by what's happening, what it's supposed to do, and um, you know that 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 I guess that uh, that feeling kind of comes from you know whatever story point you have. So think about that moment and think about what kind of shapes you're designing to make that feel that way, right? If if you make it feel dangerous, if you kind of push. Um, you know, the danger aspect, right? Think about, you know, maybe sharp shapes, maybe, you know, like kind of contrast it with something that, that maybe your hero character is wearing, right? Like if your hero is like red, maybe the enemy factions like green, right? Opposite colors or the shape language of your hero is a circle. Then maybe the other ones are triangles. And then think about like s symmetry and symbolism with our world, right? Because when we're designing a big, issue that we as designers always have is that we kind of push it so far to where it's you know it's um we we push it into a space of like oh it's new it's it's uh it's it's um it's never before seen but the issue with that is well no one's ever seen it so we don't know what we're looking at anymore you know what i'm saying um so as long as you can make it relatable in some sort of way you're probably going to be uh, pretty close, just like we were talking about with Riley, where it's like you know, linking it back to Docs, linking it back to the gun form language that he had, and thinking about that disposing of materials, right? The same as like you know uh, a gun releasing a, a used uh, shell, um, you know, various things like that. But it's if you can link anything back and make the audience kind of understand and feel that intent, uh, they're going to be able to read that messaging a lot better. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, little things like that can go a really long way. So. But let's do this. Let me show you what I worked on last week. Uh, where's that? Um, you probably already saw it in the YouTube thumbnail as well. So, but I did a thing. <clears throat> All right. So last week, uh, let's go back to last week real quick. Let me show this, and we'll kind of go from there. All right. So. I had this sketch, and part of it was okay, part of it wasn't. Um, most of it wasn't, to be honest. Um, I had the sketch, and I was just kind of going through things, and that's one possible way to design, right? Uh, whenever I had my, um, 
my centipede uh, kind of kind of moving right early even when I was like kind of drawing through it you know there's that's one possible solution to start designing using real realistic pieces if this is based off of a realistic thing right you can kind of start doing that and it it, it does help um, so I started doing it that way I, and um, you know it's cool it's fine um, I liked a couple things I really liked this section here especially this section like this underside where we're getting these like this uh, this curvature of all of these uh, smaller pieces, right? Like these kind of um, socket joint type areas, and kind of having it flow flow and kind of create that underside really well. And then the um, the legs and stuff, I kind of liked where that was going. Um, the head, uh, I didn't really like that at all. Like that's probably like my least favorite part. And the tail part, I did actually kind of like. But what I wanted to do. Uh, when I saw it, looked at it afterwards, I wanted to kind of push it this way a little bit more because right now it just felt kind of short. It uh, the, the gravity on it felt like it's going to lift up. You know what I mean? Like it felt like when it, this thing is crawling around, it's like on that tail end of like that experience. Um, so I was, I, I needed to make it longer basically, right? So what I did was I just started painting, right? I took it into um, whatever, here, let me turn off some of these filters. Probably too strong anyway. <clears throat> and uh, I just kind of started painting, right? I just started grabbing pieces. It's the same general kind of like workflow that I was doing. Why is that so grainy? What is going on with this thing? There it is. That's my airbrush. Did you start with a photo bash? No, I didn't. Um, so I just did uh, the same trick that I just did with, uh, with Riley's. And you can kind of see it here where like, you know, there's like still the line drawing right there. You see it? And then I just started like painting. Um, you know, obviously there's some things that I kind of, I didn't photo bash that, but I just lassoed it out and painted where there's like different materials that I kind of included in there as I went, um, or just little like bullet holes and like just kind of wear and tear rust and all that. Uh, but all of this was painted. I don't, uh, I don't remember using any photos in this other than like texture stuff. Like, uh, um, shit, I don't even think, to, actually, to be honest, I don't even think I did that. I was supposed to in uh, some of like the, uh, the kind of grungy areas, but, uh, I don't think I did. So, but, um, cool. you can kind of see how loose a lot of this stuff is. You can, you can even still see the line drawing that I was doing, but all I did was just convert it into that value range that, uh, we kind of talked about in, uh, during, during Riley's crit and then just started painting on top, right? Because a lot of this stuff is not really important that it, uh, I guess is fully flushed out yet. It's just important that I get most of the way there. And then, you know, as long as the pieces are kind of doing what I needed to do, um, you know, the, the eye, like it doesn't look like a line drawing anymore, right? Because yeah, there's values and all that stuff. So, but I, you know, I like the way this turned out. I, I'm, what I really like about this is this shape here where it creates this, like this, this form turn, right? Where you feel it, you feel it rotating. You feel like, you see the top end here and then you start seeing the bottom plane there essentially, right? Same here where it's like you're seeing the top here and it kind of curves on itself and you start seeing the underside there. And it's like a super like cool, um, I don't know, like organic kind of moving machine. But then, you know, we see how like big and gigantic it is because we have scale, right? We have, uh, we have this thing kind of, you know, uh, being a certain size, right? So, but... Uh, for the remaining of this uh, this stream, probably like an hour and 15, I'm going to kind of start rendering, right? Uh, right now, if you actually look at it, it's actually not, not as clean as you might think. Uh, I mean, there is some cleanliness to it for sure. But, um, you know, I'm just going to use this time to kind of uh, move into uh, just kind of cleaning up some of these pieces and then getting it to a better presentable spot. Uh, you know, just some there's some things that don't look that great. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so let's uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> Cool. Where is my thing? If you guys have any questions, um, you know, just let me know. Um, this, then, you know, we're in the demo demo side now, so it's kind of like we uh, we can talk about like as deeper topics and stuff like that. So, Earth says, uh, "What are some secret Photoshop keys that you feel most people don't use?" I feel most people don't use. Hmm. Um. Well, it's not a secret Photoshop key um, that is set up. I guess stock, right? I mean, it is technically, but it's uh, it's not set up the way that uh, I'm using it. So what I like to do a lot is check my values. So, uh, uh, you, you know, go into grayscale really easily. And then usually what you'll do is, you know, you fill the you fill the new layer, 
with black or whatever, set it on color, right? I don't like doing that because it's dangerous. Uh, the reason for that is because you can like merge this layer into stuff or you have to like go in and kind of click it, right? So what I'd like to do is click Command Y or Control Y, right? But if you do that on your computer in a stock Photoshop, um, it's gonna be um, the CMYK setting. So, you know, normally here, let's see. Uh, it's gonna be like this where you have CMYK, right? Where it's just the, the colors desaturate. It looks more like a, a print, you know, for printing reasons. Uh, but if you go to view, proof setup, custom, and then device to simulate, change that to uh, dot gain 20, click OK. Uh, you're, now your command Y is going to turn everything to grayscale, which I feel is really helpful. Um, it's it's uh, it's a little bit quicker, and you don't use up uh, Photoshop, I guess, memory or bandwidth to make to have, to have that layer. You know what I mean? So cool, cool. Let's see. Let's get into this. And after that, mm, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I do use Photoshop tricks that are like you know, I guess. Uh, very um uh you know i use i use a lot of photoshop tricks right but i guess i don't really like i don't know it just doesn't uh i don't really like it doesn't register to me that that nobody uses some of these things you know what i'm saying uh, maybe i'll call it out as i as i'm thinking about it, as i'm working so but here's a trick not a trick here's a strategy that i would highly recommend if you're Somebody that, um, you know, has like a lot of like cylinders and stuff, kind of like what we're doing here. Uh, what I'd recommend is don't paint it like you see it, right? Um, it sounds, you know, sounds very obvious, but you'd be surprised how often that happens. <laughs> so um, I'm going to pull this aside, right? And I'm just going to turn it vertical. I'm going to get as close as I can to vertical using like the side over here. And I'm going to start painting that, right? Um, just because now I can use my uh, my ellipse tool and stuff like that to, to make sure that all these ellipses are lining up perfectly. And I just need to roughly match kind of what's going on here. Um, but it's going to help you get things a lot cleaner, right? So, oh, dirty tricks. Let me show you. So because I'm a hack, um, I you even just saw it just a second ago when I turned it off. I have the original, um, I guess, design that I was doing here, right? It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it looked fine. Oops, not that one, this one. And then what I did was I kind of duplicated it and I kind of filled it in the back where I needed it, especially like, you know, some of this stuff over here, like, hold up, turn on my red. Like that, like that curve right there. Oh, dude, that does everything. Cause now it feels like it's going over the rock or now here. I, it, it was kind of going down this way and it felt like a weird break between here. So I just kind of like made, made it go that way. But instead of, you know, painting it like a, like a good boy, I just turned it, I just duplicated the whole thing. Hold up, let me see, where's my, there it is. You can kind of see like the tail piece that I used a lot. Um, and I just kind of like put it around in places that I need. Cause I was just, I'm just using those one, those little sections and uh, within the back, right? No one would ever know. Everyone's like, oh shit, yeah, dude, you totally painted that. I'm like, yeah, I know. So, let's see. Boom. Um, cool. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's get into this. All right. So, the, the, uh, one of the main issues that you're going to run into, right? So, um, like I did with, uh, with with Riley's painting where I just took that line drawing and then I just like, just turned down the, val the values and it looked like a solid kind of thing. Um, it's gonna be very monochromatic and that doesn't look very good, right? So you, you wanna kind of like get out of that as soon as you can. Like when you start rendering, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to start, but it's not a really good way to kind of make sure everything looks pretty solid, right? Like it just doesn't look that great. So, um, you know, this is kind of where this phase right now that I'm kind of getting into comes from, or, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring back that complexity, bring back that, uh, that intrigue into, uh, the forms because right now it's just all one solid gray. And if, you know, if you're a good designer, you know, that's not good design, right? Like, you know, that's, uh, a, 
you know, it's just bland. It just needs like value breakup and stuff. And this is how we make things look a little bit better, you know? So. Cool. One little like, no one asked my opinion on tricks, but I'm just saying it because it's relevant to what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. One little trick I do to re-distort something back to orthographic straight up and down is I just hit the command single apostrophe to bring up the grid, like the uh, inches and stuff. And then you can just like perfectly align that to the verticals of the canvas. Wait, what? Hold up, hold up. So what do you mean? Like, so hit command single apostrophe, single apostrophe. and you'll bring up the grid. And that, oh. Yeah. And then I just, I just use this as a guide to redistort my object back into perfectly vertical or horizontal perspective. Dude. It's hilarious because I use the side of the canvas like a scrub because I'm like, I'll just kind of like line it up like that. I'm like, oh, let me, you know what I mean? I'll just kind of get that. I'll distort it. I'll do what I need to do. But like, I don't bring up that grid. I, I've clicked that before and I know that exists. I just never, I don't know why. I just never thought of doing that. <laughs> right, right. It can get tricky if snapping is turned on because then it'll try to snap to the grid. But I you just turn that off and you're good to go. Oh, yes. Deuce. I have like a tiny little question about using custom shapes versus just doing something manually. Okay. Um, I thought today, like I make circle rings a lot, like um, just like a ring that's a circle. And the way I do that is I, you know, make a circle, make a copy it, invert the color, shrink it down, command select that layer, delete that layer, and then delete on the other layer. And I make a ring that way. I don't know if that makes any sense. It was kind of complicated what I just said, but Today I was like, I'm gonna make a custom shape. And uh, I did that and the work path kind of came out all weird. And I ended up just kind of going back to the way I was doing it. So I guess it's like a silly question, but do you feel like custom shapes have their limit where it's just almost faster to just do something like clouds or, or grass versus bringing in a shape? I don't, I don't use custom shapes that much. I, it's the, the only custom shapes I will use is a brush, right? Like, you know, like it's not like the shape tool, like it's a little bit different, right? Um, huh. I feel, I, I guess there's no real reason. I think it's just habit. It's just like the way I kind of did things, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a limit to like every tool, right? Um, I guess like you, you were using a ring custom shaped tool, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would just, you know, Q, hold down shift to like make it square. Yeah. Fill, make a smaller, you know, copy, make a smaller one. Um, oh. Yeah, see. Fill and then duplicate that layer once you filled it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah just to make like a, yeah. So what I'll normally <laughs> do, if that's ever the case, um, I have my uh, stroke binded to shift F, I think. <clears throat> so edit stroke or command F. And so uh, what I'll do is like, I have my selection here and then I'll just like stroke it with like 200 or something. Right. And it'll give me, oh shit, that's kind of blobby. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe that's, that's a little big, but I'll do like maybe like 20 or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. And it'll give me something like kind of like a, a ring that I might need. And if I ever do need it to be like, like, a, like thicker, like thicker walled, um, I guess I'll kind of do something like this. <clears throat> and then I just fill it out inside it inside of there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I do. I do agree. There's uh, it's a very convoluted way, but um, I think I think it just depends on what you what you need, right? Like because you know not and not every tool that we that we use is going to uh, I guess create the shape that we need, right? Just because you know it just can't. Um, I don't I don't really like using shape uh, custom shapes that much, just because. Uh, uh, I haven't needed to, to be honest. I I, I felt like uh, I've I've gotten away with uh, with with my uh, brush shapes or just photo bashing or using assets. Um, you know what I mean? So I'm not sure if that right, helps, right. but yeah. And then just last thing is congratulations again on Blue Eye Samurai. Um, I haven't had the time to watch it in full yet, but I watched the first episode and um, yeah, it looks amazing. And I can totally see your just a little bit of like your style in there that's got to be exciting yeah they appreciate that man yeah it was fun it's 
and it's nice too because like that show kind of like i guess um for for everybody that's like taken my class in the last like three years you can kind of start seeing like where i'm pulling like a lot of this because i didn't paint like that before right it was uh, a lot of it was like you know i was just kind of learning that on the job or doing whatever and it was very uh it's a very great learning experience, um, I, I, I felt, and uh, yeah, it turned out great. I'm, I'm glad that it, it looks the way it does. There were there were times where you know there was like worries about uh, the, you know the quality and uh, stuff like that, and and how it's coming out. But like you know the production designers and the art leads and stuff and directors, you know they all kind of pulled it together really well, and uh, it looks good. I'm I'm, I'm happy with uh, you know obviously there's there's always things that we can improve, right? But I think it's uh, it's it's looking really nice. So. Helps if the, the it all just comes together as a super sick hole. It's like all of it really adds up. It's a great, great show. Oh yeah, appreciate it, man. Hopefully, hopefully there's a season two. I don't. I, I mean, if there is. They haven't. They haven't told me shit. But <laughs> there's. Uh, I'm. I'd, I'd be excited to 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 see that. Uh, see how it turns out. Which it looks like they set it up pretty well to there to be a season two which is which is nice so i don't know where i heard it i think i thought i read some internet comments saying that someone on your cruise wanted four seasons four seasons dude i mean if it if it uh, employs me for four seasons bro <laughs> that'd be sick i don't know i just read that on the internet that'd be cool uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I, I'd love if that happened. I, I, I mean, I think uh, it was nice too because, like, I, I, I did enjoy the story. I think it's been a while since I've actually like enjoyed any any content as of lately. I think an issue, a big issue that happens is like when you work on content, you kind of like, I don't know, like you kind of just you're so much more critical of things. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to just. I don't know, just kind of criticize things uh, and not enjoy it as much. But I, I, I did enjoy this a, a little bit more than uh, than I have enjoyed other things lately, which is which is nice. Cool. Do you think that they'll call you back if they want more seasons? Shit, I hope so, man. <laughs> Toby, if you're watching this, man, just 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 call me, man. I'll be available. Whatever you need, man. <laughs> Whatever you need. Toby's my uh, production designer, in case you guys are wondering. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully, uh, obviously, sometimes it's not in their control or whatever it is. But uh, I would imagine, I would imagine so. Obviously, knock on wood, right? Knock on wood. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'd imagine that they would, at the very least, want uh, original, original mem uh, crew members to kind of continue that because trying to train. I guess people to I guess um, to re to relearn that style would be a nightmare because that it took a while. It, it was like I think um, maybe like the first little bit. I guess the show style was kind of like being developed, and it was uh, it was a um, interesting experience, kind of seeing and, and and watching like I guess some of the crits happen and stuff like that. You know, everyone having to learn uh, Jason's style, the way yeah. he paints. Yeah. Right it's a, it's hard you know it's uh especially like with um with a bunch of different artists and a bunch of like senior level artists too is everyone paints just a little bit different um and everybody is like pretty solid to where it's hard to um uh i guess uh mimic that too like you know like a lot of these artists they have their own very unique interesting look and it's you know just imagine trying to copy that you know that's scary you know <laughs> Yeah. Boom. I did feel bad for uh, the uh, so there was um uh there's a there's a studio behind the Netflix studio like kind of doing all doing all the work essentially right um it's called uh, Blue Blue Spirit Studios and they did a lot of the production work so like we did the designs and stuff but they actually like made the backgrounds and like did the thing you know. And uh, it was funny just because, like, they would, you know, they'd get, like, a painting from Yun or something and be told to copy that. I was like, good luck, bro. Like, fucking. <laughs> In my mind, I was like, I'm just glad I don't have to do that. Um, not, I guess, not match as closely, but it was uh, it was fun. It was fun seeing it come back, too, because I was like, damn, dude, they fucking nailed it. Like, that's crazy, you know? And those, 
uh, it was cool just seeing uh, the different, um, I guess, uh, skill sets and stuff that were kind of brought between like all the other artists, you know, like not even just like artists in our studio, but stuff that would come back uh, from outsourcing and various things like that. So, <clears throat> was that the? No, I don't know. How how many projects have you been like in the studio? Out or because you were at Scribblepad for a long time outsourcing. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the one of the first projects where you were like directly on the studio? <clears throat> yeah, like participating. Uh, one of the, I mean, the the yeah, Net, uh, uh, Netflix was the first big project that I was on, um, like actually in studio, in house. Uh, I'm, I was usually, I've, uh, you know, I've been part of, like for example, like at Sony and Machine Zone, like they had their own products. I was in house there, but uh, as far as like the uh, the project being, um, I guess a little more notable, right? That's yeah, Netflix was definitely the one of the bigger ones or the biggest one so far. So. And in true Kenny fashion, right? Don't paint something more than once. Oops. Preferable. If you guys learn anything from me, it's that. Just don't paint something more than once. If there's a, if you're like, if you're like, man, I, uh, I don't want to be painting these rocks all day, or I don't want to paint this tube over and over again. It's uh, your fault, not the rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, just don't. Just, you know, figure it out. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm having a bit of a challenge at work where um, I'm being asked to do blue sky stuff. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, it's just kind of new to me. And feels like a, a bit above my pay grade where it's like, I need to establish tone, style, and mood. And... It says designs don't need to be locked down yet, but I do want to present something that's interesting. You know, it's like it's a, it's a lot to think about at once. Yeah. I guess uh, you're kind of asking, like, uh, how to go about that or what's going on? It's just remarking, I guess. Oh, nice. if, you, if you have comments you want to add. Just... <laughs> yeah. No, Blue Sky, Blue Sky development is freaking difficult, man. Like, it's... Because it could be anything. And that's why it's like whenever you're doing some of these things, it's like, you know, the, the painting could literally be anything oftentimes. Like, you know, there's there's like uh, rough parameters that they'll give you, but they're just like, just run, you know? And uh, it can be very limiting uh, because like the, you know, when you get unlimited freedom, right? It's very hard to kind of, you know, like make all that, you know, work well, right? And so yes. for me... Um, a big thing that I like to kind of do is just try to latch on to like one or two ideas per image, right? Because the images themselves, they're, they're going to be developed, right? It's just like what we're talking about with here where, you know, half of these ideas, they kind of started a certain way, but, uh, it doesn't need to end that way. Right? So every image that I do, I try as much as I can to make sure that, you know, there's at least one solid idea that's kind of. It's kind of working. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And that we can kind of improve it, do what we need to do to make that look sick, right? Um, and it's just kind of latch on to a, a, an emotion. Try to latch on to a moment. Because if you try to latch on to a function or like a cool activity, right? Uh, like, uh, like, you know, like, oh, there's this big gate opening or whatever, right? Um, it can be cool for sure, but... You're kind of, you're playing with something that's a little bit more difficult to sell, right? Because like, for example, um, when we do a lot of pitch art, I'm kind of like leaning into that emotional aspect. Like, so wouldn't it be cool if like, whenever you're, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're playing this game, you're like cutting through these goblins, you see one get chopped in half and it's like, you know what I mean? Or it's like, whatever, whatever kind of game you're playing, if it's like that kind of game, you know, if you're doing like Cookie Mama, right? That's not, that's not the same. It's not the same action, mm -hmm. but you know, you're, you're kind of leaning into like whatever it is that you want to do. You're, you're trying to hit a feeling because all the other stuff, the mechanics, the, you know, whatever can be figured out later. Right. Um, but it's that 
is that initial reaction to like, oh, this is pretty fun. This is uh, this activity would be something that they that they want to that they want to do, you know, or whatever it is. Um, and so whenever I'm designing, I, I try to lean as much as I can into that that aspect. Um, because if you don't, then you're just leaning into like a design of a thing and people generally speaking, don't really care about things, you know, it's like they, um, they, there's a, there's an overwhelming majority of artists that like really like design stuff. Like for example, like this gun's like, Oh dude, I'm designing the best gun in the world. A lot of people don't care, especially at that top level. Cause they're like, you know, how's this fun for kids? How is this interesting for whoever, you know? And that's what you want to lean into. It's it's how do you make your audience like just you know have fun? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah um, that helps. Yeah, because once you get that, you're 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 probably in a pretty good spot. Because now it's like okay, cool. Um, did not think about like what kind of game is it? You know, is it a shooting game? Is it a an RPG? You know, something like like lean into those uh, those more. Um, I don't know, understandable moments in your uh, in 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 your uh, in, in a project right where it's like oh yeah they're exploring this cave and there's this kind of sneaking feature or whatever they, they wanted to show and you're showing this assassination happen like oh shit you know it's like the moment it's the uh it's the uh the grand kind of excitement part where it's like oh yeah this is when like they killed this dude or whatever you know and we can figure out all the other stuff later but it's that it's those small little things of just fun is this fun right is this something that people are going to put money into or people that are going to buy stuff like that right mm. yeah my requests are are pretty big too it's like we want to see a full camp with multiple players uh, doing this activity and maybe two or three monsters uh, creeping up or trying to attack at the same time or something it's like man that's a lot to cram in yeah and it has to be cool and it, i have zero direction and there's you know it's just like i i have nothing other than they want it to be like i have one keyword of an emotion <laughs> yeah that's uh that's senior life dude that's uh that's what it, that's what it is bro <clears throat> It's like, you know, it's like I've said before, for, for, for those, you know, watching and haven't taken my class, right? It's whenever you're like, because, you know, we always hear the idea of like junior, senior, you know, artists, whatever it is, right? There's, there's always like those, those different ranks that, we, that we, uh, we, we hear about. And then the initial, the initial read is like, oh, yeah, because, you know, he's senior because he can paint really well. No, he's senior because he can think very well, right? Um, and it's that thought process of like, how do you know, from starting from basically nothing, like they, they'll come up to you and they'll be like, Hey, we have this idea for a million dollar project. You're like, what's the idea? We don't know. You know, we're still figuring it out. We have some rough ideas. We have some reference boards, whatever. Right. And they're like, run, go explore, be an artist, you know, and they, they don't realize how, how difficult of a fucking question that is, or, uh, of a statement that is. And, uh, it's. It, it's really hard to do that as a junior because you're, you, sh, you know, you're still worried about just making a good image. But I think, you know, once you, once you get into those higher levels, you start realizing, oh, it's not about my, my painting ability. It's about my ability to design and come up with cool scenarios and realizing what's important and what's not, right? What's not important is like some of the design aspects, but what is important is the moment that's happening and, you know, how do we show that and what kind of, what kind of angle do we show that in, right? There's a lot of little things that uh, really do uh, make the um, make that experience just uh, I don't know just a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <clears throat> I was curious to ask in pre-production how much like world building or lore are you provided early on, or how much of a say do you have in creating that? Mm. Yeah, if it's not. Stuff. Sometimes you have a lot. Uh, sometimes like, so for example, like, uh, in my experience, uh, so I'm, I'm mostly in pre-production in most jobs that I'm at. Um, so, uh, usually what they'll be like, is like, oh, Hey, we have this idea, right? It's like, there's this dude, like, you know, campsite. Right. And then there's like, 
uh, all these other little things that they, they want me to, uh, to include or whatever. And um, I'm, uh, you know, I guess uh, I'll kind of had this prompt. And then there's like level designers and then there's all sorts of other people involved to, to make this idea look interesting or cool, right? Um, but I'll do a design and then somebody would be like, oh, that's really cool. Here, I thought about this when I saw it. Right, just like what we do in class, or like you know, when I'm, when I'm giving a crit, it's just like, you know, uh, it's a lot of like, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't think of it that way, but now I, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, uh, like I'll see, you know, people have done that all the time where I'll uh, I'll give a crit and like, oh, I didn't see it that way. Cool, you know what I mean? And that's because that's exactly what happens in production. It's a lot of like, um, just people seeing things that others didn't, and then we kind of act on it. So I'll get a script. From a writer or whoever like a, just a prompt a paragraph or even just a launch somehow and then from there um they will uh show that to maybe a storyboard artist uh because they're boarding out the scene they're like oh hey here's the here's that prop that uh, here's a first pass on that prop design that they're they're working on or whatever and they're like oh shit, that's cool i didn't think of it that way but here you go you know and it's like it's this whole collaborative process that really um uh we kind of bounce off each other you know what i mean so in terms mm -hmm. of complete zero, generally speaking, artists won't have that. You know, I guess if, depending on, and I guess not even generally, but most of the time artists will have something because we're not the first people on that, uh, on that design path. You know what I mean? There's like writers, there's uh, game directors or even directors themselves, right? Uh, they're not, like we're not the first people on the list essentially. Um, but, you know, when whenever we get on there, there's usually not a lot of imagery happening. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of ideas kind of being thrown around. And then they use us to kind of, you know, help establish some of those other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I guess, we don't have even words. <laughs> yeah. So. You, yeah. Like, like I was saying, some, you know, uh, some, some places are different, right? There is a, uh, in an ideal world, right? Where, where they're yeah. not, uh, having everybody wear multiple hats. Yeah, there's there's supposed to be a couple different people, you know, storyboard artists, level designers, whatever, right? Kind of participating in this with you. And because of that, right, you're able to kind of like bounce off uh, more ideas and, you know, do whatever you need to do to make that look cool. But sometimes, yeah, that's not, sometimes it's not an option, which, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I find it's like kind of in a operating in a vacuum yeah where we do have some creative designer but that person is operating with the game design team and the executive team and not with artists at all so mm. what they come up with will be separate from what i'm doing so i don't really know if i'm going to be delivering what's in their head and at the same time like uh, none of the artists are very excited about the direction so it's like I, I imagine that's going to come into play in the future where there's kind of some push and pull on what the art team is excited about in general. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, there's always, I think, like for me, um, like, I'm always very, like, because, uh, you know, People are pretty generic, right? For for those of you that are like thinking that the concept art world is like some bastion of creativity, where it's like, dude, the creativity runs on tap over there, bro. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not. Uh, there's a lot of shitty ideas. There's a more often than not, there's a there's just a metric ton of it, and our job is to sort through it, right? And so, whenever we get prompts and stuff that like it's like, oh, that's you know, that's kind of boring or whatever. You know, you gotta you gotta make it cool. That's that's your job. That's that's why you're the artist, right? Um, and you know, yeah, there's things that you can kind of do to you know, um, do whatever, right? To you know, there's there's different parameters that you can choose to kind of mess with to kind of get you a better idea. But yeah, that's I mean, that's why you're there, right? That's your job to make it look cool. Um, and I think uh, once you once you kind of get that, it's like that's why you're hired, right? Once you get that, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Now, what, what am I what am I gonna do to make it cool? What would you want to see? The, you know, because there's parameters that you need to that you need to understand about it, right? There's you know there's just things that that need to happen, 
And so now with those parameters, how do you make it even better, right? How do you, mm -hmm. how do you tell somebody like, okay, cool. I like your idea. That's pretty cool. Look, I added to it to kind of fix some things. Obviously you're not going to be able to just rewrite the whole script, but there is a level of like, you know, you're, you know, you're in blue sky development. You're the, the ideas come from you, you know, um, you're, you're part of that idea generating team. And if they like it, you know, or if they like it, right. There's also, there's also that where you could have a design team that's really not, I guess, that good at finding something or, you know, like finding good ideas, which is a whole other topic. But it is something where um, it's you, you want to just provide as many ideas as you can. And what they give you is usually a suggestion, right? There's, I mean, there's things that they want to see for sure. But a lot of it is like, you know, you know we kind of have this idea and we want to see where you take it. And um, because I've gotten this crit before where, and for those that do freelance, you probably heard this or even just students in general. It's like, oh yeah, you gave us what, what we asked for, but we don't really like it, right? And you're like, so what the fuck, man? You know what I mean? Like, cause think about it. Like you, that's what you told me. Like, how did I mess up? That's your fault, right? No, you know, it's, it's, and it sounds funny, but I mean, that's, that's why they handed it to you because they're looking for new ideas and you get, you have to understand that, you know, um, sometimes they don't take the ideas, which, you know, uh, happens freaking way, way more than, way more than usual, right? That happened, that happens more often than not. Uh, but they have, at the very least, if it's a boring idea, right? That's 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 your job. That's where you come in because you're you're part of that uh, you're part of that design team, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's cool. It, it's gonna be an interesting challenge for sure. Yeah, it's um, it's fun. I I think um, like for me, a lot of the uh, a lot of that blue sky development, it's stressful like to say the least like like immensely stressful for those that like don't have never done it before um i don't recommend doing it <laughs> it's like because there's a lot of money on the table like there's a lot of stressful people and there's a lot of things that are like you know you're you're kind of like they're telling you like hey we need the next biggest idea uh, uh, can I see it by by lunch? You know what I mean? Like what? Like you know what I mean? Like you're like that's not possible. You know, it's just there's just nothing that there's there's no way I can make that happen. Um, and there's a lot of that. But you know, um, just trust that you know the 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 team will, will help figure this out. It's just you you got to you, you got to be supplying just a couple ideas here and there that make this you know just 10, 10 20 percent better. You're looking for nuggets of information, not the um, not the end result right away, you know, just like what we're doing in this project. You know, the, the reason I, I do it this way is because this is how production works. It's we need 10% of an idea. We need something that's like, that's kind of cool or it's cooler than what we had. And then from there, you know, it's, you do, you, we, uh, we, we do the rest, right? So. I'm glad that has finally settled in for me. I feel like I, I understand that now, that I'm not feeling beholden to this painting needs to be perfect yep. in execution. Um, just need to pump something out because having something visual is better than having nothing. And uh, so that, that mentality is helping a lot for sure. Nice. Yeah. I think like, when I first started, there's this pressure that I felt to like always make something like that. That's going to just kill it. And it's like, it's the best idea you've ever seen. And we're going to do it in one shot because, you know, we're gangster like that. Right. And in reality, mm -hmm. it's a lot of like, you know, I hate most of this idea, but there's like this little part here that I kind of like. <laughs> and then we, we, you know, we go from there. Right. It's it's you know, it's it's always just those little bits or you want to give them just enough information for them to see like, oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. I see where you're I see where you're coming from now. Um and then, you know, we, we, we operate off of that, right? Um, it's never like, this is 100% it, you know, unless you're like, I don't know, not even Craig Mullins does shit like that. But like, unless you're like some weird, you know, savant at design, right? It's, there's no way that you're, you're going to get that. So just aim for, aim for average, aim for just a little bit, aim for enough for them to be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's figure out the rest of that, you know? Yeah. That's definitely a much better way to look at it. Yeah. 
Yeah, because that shit would drive you nuts, man. It's just like, because you're like, nothing's, nothing's getting approved. No one likes any of this. Or maybe they like a little bit of it, but it's just like, you know, it's not really, you know, doing anything, right? And yeah, it, it, uh, it really is, it can be painful sometimes because you're like, I don't know what's, you know, you can almost like, you, you can almost start like feeling like, feeling like giving up because you're like, I, I don't know what they want. And nothing that I do mm -hmm. is what, they want for whatever reason so i'm like why are you even hiring me because clearly clearly i'm not working but then they'll be like oh yeah we love your work you're like what are you talking about you know what i mean like the, just the <laughs> the mixed messages that you'll be getting off of this shit, right yeah like especially our, our studio has pivoted direction that is entirely opposite of what i was originally hired on to do oh yeah it's different in tone different in direction it's a genre that i have never painted before and which of course you know it's our job to be able to be malleable and do whatever so i'm, I'm gonna do it so i'm paid to but um, it is curious it's just it's like a, it's not my strengths <laughs> but i'll try oh dude dude that's everything man and like for so for those that don't know i i uh, i teach a uh, a style and mood class that's exactly what i'm talking about right because like you know we i do this class because everyone's like oh i have the style that i work in great man that's awesome what happens when there's a new project what happens if you get fired let go contract ends whatever right you got to find the exact style you work on no you know what i mean you have to figure it out you got to you know like you have to adapt right because Naughty Dog did Last of Us. They also did Crash Bandicoot. You know what I mean? Like it's the same, same fucking studio, man. You know, and it's it's like whenever you, um, I don't know if it's the same exact uh, team that did it. Probably not. But the idea is, there's multiple projects like that in every single production, and you have to understand that to be, to be a successful artist is not somebody that gets a job. It's somebody that gets the job consistently. Somebody that is able to adapt and learn and push um, uh, push the uh, I guess the production uh, in you know in, in in certain ways. And somebody that is very tied down to one style is rarely that person, right? If you're you know if you're ever having like I can't draw this because it's not the way I draw, it's probably because you're not very good at drawing. You know, you're not very good at painting or whatever it is. I don't say it like that, but I mean, that's the reality of it. And, you know, you're going you're gonna to be um, pushed onto projects that, you know, you, you're you not maybe a, a, attuned to, right? Um, but what are you going to do? And just say, sorry, man, I quit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I guess I'd rather not feed my family, right? <laughs> but uh, that's, you know, that's yeah. what it is. Um, I did a, uh, a project recently. So... Uh, I posted it today, actually. The um, I did some posters for for Netflix uh, for the for the project for, for the project that I was on, and uh, the my part in that poster was character line art, right? Because when you think Kenny Vo, right, you think character line art. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not <laughs> that's not the that's not a very um, you know what I mean? Like that's not what you would hire me for, right? Uh, because clearly, right. I'm just, you know, I'm doing freaking mechs and landscapes. And that's that's not my accident for everybody. That's not like cuz cuz I'm saving my characters for for to to blow your minds later. It's cuz I I'm trash at characters. And so um or at least I'm not a I'm not a I'm a lot higher level in my uh my my environment designs, right? And that's just what it is, right? But what am I going to say? No. You know what I mean? Like here, uh, you ever, you know, you ever said no to like 10 G's right in front of you? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like, uh, it's not about money, but you know what I mean? Like these jobs, they're coming at you. And if you say no to it, you're, you're, you're down on that income. Right. And especially in this economy, right. Where anything, uh, I'm not saying I pay 10 G's for it, but the idea is, you know, it's, if you're not, you know, taking these jobs, um, because you're, you're lacking the skill, then, you know, you're, you're probably losing income, right? This is a business at the end of the day, uh, or, the, or you should be running your career like a business, right? And uh, it's literally just 
your foundations are going to carry you. And that's why, and for everybody, everybody that knows me, I shit on 3D all day long, right? And it, it, even as an artist that that uses it, like, uh, I don't want to say consistently, but I, I use it a decent amount now. And um, I haven't I haven't this, uh, this stream yet just because uh, there's a lot of beginners here, so I'm trying not to use any tricks right now. Uh, we'll get into that later. But anyway, like... I do that because 3D is a very limiting tool and it, it kind of masks your um, your abilities. If you're not very good or if you're not somebody that is, uh, I guess, very, um, I don't know, uh, adaptable, right? Someone that doesn't have good foundations. Um, it can make you feel like you're actually okay, you know, because it fixes all that for you. But if you you know, uh, then are put in a situation where you're out of your comfort zone. Let's say, is it, Hey, can we, can we get this done by, by end of day today? Uh, because we have a meeting tomorrow for clients or whatever that happens more often than you can possibly imagine where it's like, Hey, we have a, we have a, we have a meeting with the, the higher ups tomorrow. We, we need something and like, Oh, cool. Let me, let me render out this. Let me make a whole model and then render, render it out and then paint on top. And you're like, how long does that take? Uh, maybe a week. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or you can be like, yeah, let me just paint something up real quick. And it's not going to be the best. We're not looking for the most amazing thing in the world, but you have to be at least proficient enough to survive, whether it's 2d or 3d. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, it's about art skills. You're a designer, not a, not a, uh, not a 3D machine, right? Like the whole point is you're supposed to be a good designer regardless of your tools. And if your tool is kind of what makes you good, you're probably not that good. Then you are a tool. Yeah, then you are a tool. I was thinking that. I was like, <laughs> should I say that? I don't know. But uh. so um, with, I guess like what you're saying about like the design and having that skill, like that's a good thing. Um, and that's probably the best foundational thing to have. Uh, Scott Robertson, right? One of the best draftsmen that I know, he is using this tool now, the Viscom uh -huh. AI tool. Yeah. And he's using that to kind of really pump out the rendering and he can kind of art direct that to his own thing, but it'll follow his sketches. Uh -huh. How do you, do you like that process or do you like that idea of that kind of being a tool for artists that don't necessarily want to use 3D and get the fast rendering? Um, I would say, I mean, um, if you don't want to use 3D, like regardless of like what programs you're using, because he's using uh, what is it called, uh, Viscom, uh, Viscom AI or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's you know I'm not gonna talk about the the efficacy or how I feel about it. I, I don't care that much. It's, just, it's for other people. <laughs> but um, the whole idea is, you know, he is somebody that is very proficient at uh, design and painting, and drawing and just rendering as a whole. And now he's using this program to kind of get to a process faster. The issue with using that, like skip, let's say like skipping 3D, for example, or even skipping foundations to, to kind of get to that result because the AI is pretty good, right? It, it looks great. It look, for those that haven't seen it, it's insane. Um, but how would you art direct it if you don't know how to do it? You know what I mean? Because the, the thing with him is, it's because he's, you know, mother fucking Scott Robertson. You know what I mean? Like he's... Yeah, um, like he, he actually understands everything about anything with that versus someone who's just starting out, doesn't know Jack Squat. And they're like, oh, that's a pretty cool little light right there. Yeah. So and he showed the oh. difference too between, or at least the Viscom Instagram showed it, that it's, uh, if you give it a bad drawing, it just renders your bad drawing. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's where, that's where the issues come in because for everything that you do, right? you're gonna have to touch it eventually right there's gonna be a point where your hand has to go to to tablet or cintiq and you're gonna have to apply some sort of skill to it right because if you're not you're just straight up 3d modeling every single bit from atmosphere to you know all these little things and then you know are you are you you know what i mean like are, is that is that what you want to do if you want to do that great you know that's that's cool there's nothing wrong with that but oftentimes, you know, there, there's a level of like, oh, it's good enough for me to kind of start painting. You know, that's, that's usually what, what uh, a lot of like uh, proficient um, 
uh, uh, concept artists do, right? They get it just good enough to where they don't have to like kind of struggle as much, right? Because it's just faster at the end of the day. And so if you can't do that, if you can't keep up with it, then you're stuck because this is, and I, and I, I guarantee you, they're going to be like, oh, hey, that's really cool. That's a really cool image. Can we like, can we get that? Like, just, uh, can you add something to this real quick? You don't need to like, you know, just do it real quick, you know, or, hey, can you, um, can you make this quick adjustment, make that cut line different or like kind of re-render or re-change uh, the way that, uh, that, uh, you know, that panel looks or that block or redesign some of this. This looks kind of weird, right? Um, so, you know, if you can't draw or you can't design, you're like, okay, I guess I'll throw it back into the blender machine or, or throw it back into the, uh, uh, the AI machine and, you know, hope, pray that it spits out something that's kind of close, you know, or you could just draw it and go hang out with your cat. You know what I mean? <laughs> but <laughs> it's the idea is that most of the time, if you're somebody that is, um, using AI or using 3d to kind of uh fix your shortcomings more often than not uh you don't have the eye to even know that it is a shortcoming you know what i'm saying like you you probably your your ability to see is probably not as strong as you would want and that's usually what we need it's the eye not the hand that we, we that you need more of from a uh from a concept artist right because i use 3d often right i mean not super often not as much as some other artists for sure but i mean i'm definitely using it um, you know, more often than not, but whenever it comes time to paint, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll paint or do what I need. Or when I get revisions, which that's life, that's, that's concept art. If you, if you are, um, a concept artist, you are doing revisions. That is, that is the name of the game. Um, you know, and if you can't do that effectively, uh, without having to go all the way back, you're probably, uh, wasting a lot of time. Right, because there's like, oh, can I just get like a quick change? Or can you fix some of these shapes? You know, the, the render doesn't look as good. It's like, oh, I don't have that modeled out. It's like, well, uh, I don't have your paycheck for you this month. You know what I mean? Or whatever. It's it's not that dramatic, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to like offend anybody that's like super into 3D and all. It's just think about for everybody right think about your favorite artists people that you know people that you look up to you're like dude this person is insane his 3d is amazing her 3d is great right whatever it is and then go look at their sketches chances are they're probably insane right you look at jama uh jama jurabev right the, the 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 wizard of 3d where you know trailblazing every single new technology every time it comes out have you seen his paintings? This guy is disgustingly good, you know? Um, <laughs> it's, like, infuriating how good he is because then, you know, he's better at you at 3D and he can, like, you just give him a brush. He'll probably be able to do he's it. He's Pareto optimal. Yeah, it's just, like, he's just good at everything, you know? And, uh, you know, it's because then that's why he's who he is. Um, but, you know, people that are, like, super reliant on 3D, you know, oftentimes uh, those aren't, like the, the, the paintings and the designs that they're doing aren't really the ones that we're kind of looking at. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're good, they look cool, but usually the ones that really stick out, they're really just good at painting and drawing, right? And they're using yeah. 3D as a tool. So. Um, Kenny, I so I'm not a 3D artist and I'm not at all offended by anything you said, <laughs> but I will say that I um, one time, like real time, watched somebody who is a concept artist um, but they did most of their concept art in ZBrush. Okay. And I watched them concept in ZBrush and it was pretty insane to watch. Um, I, I'm i sure you're right that they probably also can draw really well, but watching them concept in ZBrush like broke my brain a little bit because they were just like sketching but molding and it was so weird, but what they were creating looked really cool. Yeah. Um, and they were just getting ideas down and then they would make, they'd save it, they'd make a new one and they'd do another one. And then if they liked their ideas, they would um, like export them to Photoshop and work on it more. Like it was weird. But yeah. But it was like cool. It was weird. And that's the thing where it's like, because this pro this person's probably very proficient with their, their uh, just design skills as a whole, right? Um, they're using 3D 
probably the way that you're supposed to use it, right? Because they use it for whatever they need. And then like you just said, they, they bring it into Photoshop to do whatever else they need to do that might be, you know, a little bit harder to do or, or more time consuming in 3D, um, which is, that's that's exactly it, right? That's that's exactly what I'm saying, where it's, they're uh, they're probably proficient at what they do. So they... And they, they've been working at Disney for the past, like, like at least seven or eight years. Yeah. I think. They're probably they're probably good at the 2D side. Um, and that's that's what you need because to be able to design like that, to be able to understand what is a good design, bad design, generally speaking, that takes a an artist that is pretty proficient at 2D. It's not necessary. There's plenty of there's plenty of artists out there that uh, are great designers without, you know, I guess fully being able to like draw, but an overwhelming majority of them are um, you know, usually 2d based artists or artists that are actually very good at 2d maybe maybe that's going to change in the next couple of years um but you know i think for me if that was the case if if that was something that um you know 3d is going to kind of be the way that uh we designers are going to kind of go i'd imagine a lot of 3d modelers would kind of be taking our jobs right now you know what i mean like you know because they're better at 3d than we are because that's what they do. And so if that was the case, if that's what we do as a, as a career, you know, a, a modeler should be able to kind of occupy our jobs, but we know that's not happening. Or at the very least, it's not like a, a wide, a wide net of, of uh, you know, not a, a, not a bunch of people are doing that. I'm sure there's modelers out there that are getting concept art jobs, right? That's, you know, but that's, it's not the common thing. It's not like, it's not like AI where it's like, oh, AI is taking all of our jobs. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's really what it means. It's for, for me, right? And I'm just a guy. I just have an opinion. Um, but more often than not, uh, from everyone that I worked with and the production processes that we go through, it's really, really hard to get through to be somebody that is uh, proficient at uh, design uh, in a production setting to just get by with just 3D. Um, because there's so many different tasks that we do that you've never even heard of, um, but we got to do it because that's what that's what that's what's needed, you know. But yeah, don't don't uh, yeah. don't don't take this as me just shitting on 3D all day. Like 3D is great. 3D is an awesome tool, and we should all probably be learning it. I mean, you should definitely be learning it. Um, but just understand that it's more than that. It's more than. Um, it's more than the program. It's something else that makes the artist great. And what you want to do is figure out what that is. Why? Uh, why is my three? Why is my amazing three D not getting me hired as quickly? You know, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But if you if you're kind of wondering that, this pr you're probably missing something else. I was gonna say that, um, like, part of the reason why I've been wanting to learn three D like isn't necessarily to like shortcut my own work, but just because I see so many job applications now, either requiring 3D like for like these roles or um, for like concept artists, environment artists, character design artists, they're either requiring 3D or it says like suggested, but I feel like more and more it says like required. It's And I know <clears throat> that like you've spoke about this, other people have spoken about this, how it's like, still just apply like sometimes they'll still like consider people even if you don't have like all their list of requirements but i mean like so many applications now i think it's like super rare to find a job posting that says 2d only um yeah because i, I think I because the competition right people are starting to uh you know because the first and foremost the most important thing to to be able to do whenever you are um just trying to get hired is you got to be a good designer. That's, that's it. That is the thing. You have to be a good designer. Um, but now because everyone's getting pretty proficient at 3d, right? Like, cause everybody starting to know it, you know, it's, it's important that you know it because now good designers also know 3d, you know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. What I'm trying to say is it's not the 3d that makes them the good designer. They just use 3d and they're, you know, they, they they use it effectively in their workflow, but it's not the reason they're good. These these 
uh, everybody that is good at 3D uh, or good at designing that uses 3D, 3D wasn't their key to success. It wasn't like the things like, oh, I wouldn't be here without Blender. It's like, no, they've probably pretty good designers as a whole uh they'd be here regardless of what program they're using you know they they would be amazing because they are just good designers you know yeah that makes sense because just imagine like you know it's like oh kenny you're only good because you have photoshop which i mean it's probably debatable to be honest like that's that's a pretty good argument at this point uh but <laughs> we know that's not true right it's like yeah I mean, if, if you put me in Procreate, um, you know, I'd probably be able to design something pretty similar. Maybe not immediately, right? I'd need some time to get used to it. But, I mean, you know, you gave me a different program, I'd probably be able to handle it, right? Uh, same with literally anything else. It's just, um, you know, uh, I can design outside or inside of Photoshop. It doesn't have to be that, right? So, it's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Look at that. Bro, dude, check this shit out, man. Brand new, right off the factory floor, right? So, just going into this real quick. I'm going to answer some questions. I'm, see, I'm seeing them pile up. But uh, just, I've been kind of taking my time just designing this thing, right? Because, you know, I'm going to be, obviously, I'm going to be rendering this the way I normally do, right? Just, we'll, we'll, we'll handle it. But I just wanted to kind of show you, like, what rendering actually is. You know, you zoom in 400, 500%, and you start figuring shit out, right? You start going in there. And, um, you know, you start making things cleaner. You start, you know, you start mapping things out, make, making things make sense. Um, and then, you, you know, you'll get there. But I think a big thing that happens a lot, especially from what I've seen um, from students is there's not this, uh, I guess, want to zoom in. Like I'm 600% zoomed in and I'm just painting piece by piece. And I'm going to use this effectively like I always do, right? It's going to be the same leg over and over again in all of these different pieces, right? But, you know, it's it's starting to render out really well, right? It's I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to making this look pretty solid. And so, you know, just whenever you're rendering, you know, really just get in there, right? Zoom in 600%, whatever it is, and make this stuff look solid because... Because oftentimes we'll work like this far back. We're like, oh, that looks pretty good. And you'll squint down. You're like, yeah, it looks great. But then, you know, you kind of just do it full size. You're like, what is that? Like, you know, even some of this here where it's like technically a full render, you know, it's like not that good. And I still need to kind of go back in and fix it. But because I'm worried about my prop first, right, I'll get to some of this stuff later. You know, I'm just spending my time to make it look solid. I'm, I'm kind of implementing like lights and designs, different materials like brass and, you know, whatever. I'm going to kind of weather this in a second uh, and show you how to do that. Um, or I guess I'll be, I'll be doing that. And if you're watching, you'll, you'll learn how. Um, but, you know, that's generally speaking how I kind of go about a lot of this stuff. So, But uh, cool. Let's, uh, let's answer some questions real quick. Uh, Earth says, are you using the art pen? I'm not. Uh, this is just the standard uh, Wacom pen that comes with uh, your Wacom. I mean, I guess the, the 20, like, not the new line of pens. It's the... The last model, like the Wacom Pros, the uh, the Intuos Pro, sorry, and then the Cintiq 22 Pros and stuff like that. Uh, so pretty standard. I don't like using the. Um, I try not to use different like. Um, uh, sorry, different um, uh, tools, like specialty tools, because um, I don't always have them. Sometimes I'm at somebody else's desk giving notes, or like, you know, sometimes I'm not home and I have to like use somebody else's tools, whatever it is. And like, I want to still be able to kind of do what I need to do. So I try not to buy new things as much, but what I, what I do have though, something that's really nice, the art pen, um, you can like, if you have, if you're looking at my camera, you can rotate it in your fingers and the brush will turn. I actually don't like that as much. What I like to do is uh, if you go to your brush settings, like I have a flat brush right now, so you can kind of see uh, what I'm doing here, but <clears throat> so it's like that, right? And what I'm doing is, if you go to Shape Dynamics, Angle Jitter, turn that to Pen Tilt. And now when I rotate, when I tilt my pen, right? Just imagine you're holding a brush like a, like a, like an oil painter, right? Like if you're holding it like in the uh, the overhand grip, right? When you brush, you brush like this. And if you want a sideways mark, you you go like that, right? It's the same idea. And so I kind of use my tool to do that. And that's stock with all pens, uh, all stock Wacom pens. I don't know. I don't know how far back it goes, but at least this pen and the pen before this, the grip pen does that. So, uh, yeah. 
Um, what else? Uh, Finn Down says, uh, have you ever joined a project well after the blue sky development phase? And if you have, how did you go about learning the style? Yeah, totally. So I've been, uh, I've been part of projects that uh, have already done their blue sky development and stuff like that. Um, so there is a bit of a learning curve, right? There's a bit of like, you know, you have to kind of figure out uh, what, they, what they're doing and all that stuff, right? Uh, that's definitely a thing. Uh, what I like to do is I'll do master copies. If I'm truly like not, not comfortable, um, you know, working the way they work, right? I'll do master copies because um, I just need to kind of get something pretty quickly. So for example, um, at, uh, where, where, where was it? When's the last time I, I, I didn't work in pre-production? That's how often I work in pre-production. Um, oh yeah, I did some freelance for Titmouse uh, not that long ago. Um, and they already had a look that they kind of needed. I didn't do a master copy, but yeah, I, I, you know, you kind of just look at it and you're, you're, I, I, I'm like copying shapes. You know, it's harder for me to design in that mode just because like, you know, I'm not um, super comfortable designing that way just yet, right? So that does happen for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's part of what I do, right? Um, master copies works, and then uh, kind of seeing, trying to understand what style people are people are using, right? Because the the style that they that they bring to the table, right? Use more often than not isn't something they just made up. You know what I mean? Like it's it's oftentimes like um, you know just a. Uh, uh, it's a it's a combination of like of other artists or other styles or whatever, right? And you want to like kind of figure out what that is and and break that down. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Finn asks another question. Any advice for using a soft round brush without making your painting look like plastic? Um, I would say it's it's not about the soft rounds in particular, right? It's mostly about your edge control. So, for example. Uh, whenever you're, um, you know, messing with, uh, when, whenever you're kind of like putting in a soft round, like this is like a soft round edge right there, right? Um, there's a, there's, this is the form. This is the, the, the rounder form of this, uh, this kind of tube here, this, this chamber, right? And then I have this highlight right there. You can kind of see it right there, right? And if I use the same sized hard round, um, it wouldn't look right because this is a, uh, this is a highlight you know, on the side, on the tube to make it look more metallic. Uh, so it's a thinner, harder line. So the edge, this is probably like a soft slash slash lost maybe. This is like a firm edge. And so you want to control your edges. That's the important thing. It's not about the brush. It's about the edges. You, uh, you want to think about the, the four different kind of edges that you have, right? Hard, uh, firm, soft, and lost. And as long as you have a good mixture of those, generally speaking, the paintings probably look okay. Uh, but it's usually when you kind of use a big brush for everything or the same sized uh, airbrush for all of that, it doesn't look as um, as pleasing, right? Because usually it's the edge control that's that's not happening correctly. You know what I'm saying? So, hope that helps. Um, Kampach says, uh, how, to, how to improve design skills for concept art? Well, I mean, that's a loaded one, man. Um, <laughs> that's, um, I would say the biggest thing, right? that I have found that helps me the most is be intentional about your designs because you know, there's, there's a, there's a point where for me, like I'm constantly like, like, like before I would like be photo bashing into the silhouettes. I'd be doing all these things and I just, it just, I don't know. I was like a accidentally like tripping into my, into my designs. You know what I mean? Like it sounds kind of funny, but it was like, you know, like when you're designing and you are, I guess, doing something, you're like, I don't really like where it's going. So I'm just going to kind of keep adding brush strokes, keep messing with it, keep doing what I need to do to make this thing look cool, or whatever it is, right? It's, that, that happens a lot. At least for, at least for me, it does. Um, at least for me, it did, right? And then um, I started learning how to control my designs, like what influences I'm bringing into the table, what, uh, what things am I... Uh, including to make something look and feel a certain way, right? Um, so, I, what I tried to, what I was doing a lot of was just one plus one, right? And what that means is you need one reference plus one reference and you combine it, right? Like skull plus, um, you know, yacht, 
right? And you make you, you make something, right? It's just a one plus one where it's pretty easy to kind of understand. There's less to kind of balance. Uh, what we're doing here for this project is a one plus one plus one. And it's not like simple math like that. It's more like exponential where it gets a lot harder to like kind of, um, you know, I guess do that. I guess uh, a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot harder to kind of design that way because there's more there's more things that you're kind of messing with, right? And but the thing to understand is it's all the same concepts. It's about organizing your reference and 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 being intentional about your designs, because once you're able to control it, you're relying less on accidents, right? Because a good designer is designing something intentionally. They they create a effect. They make the audience feel a certain way. They do whatever it is they need to do. Um, but it's through their, um, storytelling that they usually do that, right? Because a lot of like form language stuff looks pretty cool, but it's not until that form language actually says something about the design that really makes it cool. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's just a different, um, I guess understanding, you know what I'm saying? It's not just like that kind of feels cool. Like, cause what's cool, right? You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's how I'd go. That's how I'd recommend going about it. Uh, with that in mind, it's just do it a lot, you know, um, do it as much as possible uh, and and find design in everything where, you know, when you're designing a, uh, let's say, a, uh, a random scene, right? Even though the, the shape of the house might be a normal house or, you know, the things are very designed out. So there's not, not, uh, not designed out. The things are kind of existing, right? There's not a lot of like, I don't know. Um, new things you can add to it um that's usually where you can design a lot where you can make a house that that's already been built like a viking house that already exists but you can make it feel dangerous you're designing every single part of it not just the fact that you know it needs to be sci-fi or something we've never seen before you know what i'm saying because that's the that's the um, that's the thing that we kind of think of the most um but the thing that you need to kind of remember is design comes in all sorts of different uh, ways from just the base shape to um, you know various various other things that are part of that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, what else was that? Uh, what are some of the effective ways to get better at 2D environment thumbnails and taking one to a full finish? Um, I would say 2D thumbnails, right? Um, because I, so I teach world building too, and the way I the way I teach that class. Uh, World Building 2 is an environment, uh, intermediate environment design class for those that don't know. And the way, I, the way I like to kind of run that class is to make sure that whenever you're designing, you're kind of hitting some main topics, right? So whenever I'm doing the, uh, the thumbnails, for example, like I did the thumbnails for this painting or not this specific one, but the ones that kind of came up to this, it was a lot of like the main, um, it was, it was a lot of the main, uh, I guess, main ideas, right? It was like the strong silhouettes. It was the, um, you know, the, the various, um, I guess, uh, main points of that story. And I wasn't really worried about all the small stuff because, you know, like, like the, it took me like, I don't know, three or four weeks to kind of get to this point, right? Where I'm, you know, designing out this, this centipede creature, right? Because now I'm actually in the gears. I'm actually seeing how it functions and doing all that stuff. So I didn't really worry about all of that because like I trusted my ability to make it happen later, right? Uh, whether it's good or not, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Who, who really knows? Uh, but at the very least, I'm not trying to juggle like 10 different ideas. So when you're trying to do your, your environment design as your thumbnails, there has to be a main idea that you're trying to accomplish. And then you can elaborate on that later. You know what I'm saying? So little things like that, I think I, I feel can be pretty... Uh, pretty helpful, pretty, uh, pretty useful for, um, you know, just making things just a little bit, uh, a little bit like easier to kind of manage, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it's, I would say just try to, try to, try to nail down that main idea first, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and then after that, you know, taking it to render, I think something that, that makes it a lot easier to, to take something to render is the process that you use to get there. Right. So for example, um, if you watched my um, my previous streams, right? What I did was I made a very graphic read and then I 
put in color and then I put in my, I, I started rendering some rocks and I splashed that around. And you know what I mean? It was a very seamless step, step-by-step -step process. I didn't have to like recut anything out. I didn't have to, I guess, do a lot of the extra things that I would need to kind of clean up that painting like I used to. Cause I, what I used to do was I would like paint something as a thumbnail stage. And then from there, I would have to like kind of recut everything out and make sure that I had all my layers set up to where to go into like a finish step. But it was very like slow because I'd have to go backwards oftentimes. You know what I mean? Like I, I had to, um, I had to like flatten it down and then cut it out. And it took me a long time. Or like you have to paint around things. You have to like kind of, you know, move in and out of, um, uh, in and out of this different like painting mentality. But with my process now, the way I kind of go about it is it's very seamless from start to finish. And it makes my paintings a lot cleaner because I thought about that shape in the beginning. Instead of having to recut out mountains, recut out trees, I have every tree separate. So if I need to add and render something a little bit more, I can do that, right? Um, you know, it, to a degree, right? There's like, for example, this leg that I'm doing right now, it is very, uh, like, I, I just cut it out from the initial thing because it's all flat right now. But that's because I just kind of leave it as, like, per object. Like, the rocks themselves, I'll just paint within that. But the entire silhouette is still clean, right? Um, obviously, you know, there's, like, paint better, right? When it comes to, like, cleaning up uh, cleaning up stuff like that. But that, I, I don't, that's, like, you know, that's, that's standard. That's, like, we need to just do that regardless, right? Uh, but it's the process that I feel that really helps me get to a consistent um, result every time. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that I hope that makes sense. Mm, what else? Um, yeah, Rubik Roy says, uh, but I'm nothing without the suit. <laughs> Tony Stark, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. Like, if you're not good, if you're not a good designer without 3D, you're probably not a good designer, right? Uh, I don't want to say it like that. For I don't want to offend anybody, but I mean, that's what it is. If you're if you can't design outside of a program, you're probably not a strong designer. Not saying you're not a professional. Just saying you're probably not that strong. And that's where uh, you kind of want to just think about that. You know, just try and see like how can you. How can you uh, improve? How can you make better designs to, you know, do what you need to do, right? So it's very, um, it's very uh, uh, tough to hear that sometimes because, you know, I, I do know that there's a, I don't know, there's like a, a relief when you hear that you don't have to learn how to paint, right? Because you're like, oh, I don't need to learn how to paint. I'll just render it. It's like, uh, we're not there yet. The <laughs> Maybe AI is going to get us there. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? But I, what I do know is uh, more often than not, people that are uh, inefficient at designing, uh, just not they're just not uh, as good at designing um, by themselves, generally speaking, aren't that good at 3D either. You know, it's it's like, because if you think you're good at 3D and you're not good at 2D, well, you're probably not good at 3D either. You know what I'm saying? So I don't say it like that, but it's, uh, you know, you know how it is. Take that. I mean, you know, you use that, use that information as you will, right? So, uh, what else we got? We have any questions over here in the Discord? Um, let's see. Oh, Alex, your mic keeps going off. <clears throat> Sorry. Ah, uh, cool. All right, this is no questions. Wait, hold up. Um, finding really, uh, finding really hard to balance the fact that I need to improve some of those versus having a stable a job that's stable and doesn't have opportunities to learn. Sometimes it's very tempting to study full time again, but I feel like it's a wrong decision. Uh, so, uh, Finn, Finn Down says, I'm finding it really hard to balance the fact that I need to improve s uh, some of my fundamentals versus having a job that's stable but doesn't have a lot of opportunities to learn. Sometimes it's very tempting to go study full time again, but I feel like that's the wrong decision. I just try and study on my own as much as I can without becoming a hermit. Yeah. Um, so what I would say to that, um, if you are, uh, I'm going to take this as a, uh, I'm not, cause I'm not quite sure if you're, if, if, uh, what, what, uh, what job you're talking about. If it's like a, basically what I'm saying, if it's an art job versus a, uh, uh, like a standard kind of job, you know what I'm saying? Um, but what I am, uh, I'm going to take this as a, as uh, like if you're a professional uh, art job. Okay, cool. So 
Um, the way I would think about this, because when you're on a job, right, there is no, I mean, you're there to work. So there's no, there is no chance to really learn. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, there isn't like in, in terms of the traditional sense, because, you know, you, you're not going to be able to um, just, you know, just slow down and, and, and like, oh, hey, can I, can I spend a little bit longer on this painting? You know what I mean? Because I, I want to like learn something new. They'd be like, how about no? And you can just give us a painting when we ask for it. You know what I mean? That's, that's probably what's going to happen. Maybe not like that rude, but you know what I mean? Like they're, they're going to, they're going to want their results, not, they're not going to be worried about your training essentially. Um, but you can do little things, right? Like at the first, it, maybe it's going to be like a lot of like, oh, just on my own, I'm, I'm learning how to paint or I'm doing, doing whatever it is. Right. Or learning how to, how to model something. Let's say like 3d. Cause for me at first, I had to learn 3D at home because I wasn't fast enough to do it at work because I'd be missing deadlines if I started doing things at work. But, you know, once I once I kind of got a little bit faster, I was like, okay, cool. Let me model this crate in Blender and then I'll paint the rest. You know, I, I used my speed to kind of help me out there where I was efficient enough in, uh, in, the, in the process, in my painting, my 2D painting process to make up for my lack of 3D for a while. Right now, it's like it's just part of the process. I can I can do it regardless. But that initial kind of uh, little bit where you're learning something new, it is going to be a lot of like you're not you don't really have enough time to do it. So you probably have to do it on your own or on the weekends, whatever. But then like slowly, like you know, find out what what things that you're doing at work. Right, not find out, but just remember some of the things you're doing at work and be like, oh, okay, cool. I'm designing a lot of crates and mechs and stuff for this sci-fi game. Cool. Let me let me do the let me do the crates in 3D. Let me see how that goes, and then I'll paint over it. You know, or let me do you know once you get a little better. Let me do a mech. Let me let me you know get 10, 20 percent faster, and then it slowly builds. It gets you get to a point to where you're con you're you're, you're able to really develop that skill effectively, right? Uh, but it just takes a second. It takes a little while to um, to get to that point. So you kind of have to, you know. Uh, take your time and, and, and learn some stuff at home. You know what I mean? Um, that's how I would go about it. Uh, whether it's effective or not for you, I can't, you know, obviously I can't say, but it's, it is tempting. I, I, I will admit it is tempting to be like, just to go back to school. Cause for me, dude, in my mind. Uh, so I don't, for those that don't know, I don't have a college degree. Um, double dropout baby, you know, but um, I don't have a, I don't have a degree. And in my mind, I don't, not necessarily that I want, want the degree, but I want the time that studying for degree gives me, right? Because I'm like, if I had four years to just hone my craft, you know what I mean? Like without, you know, and you live off of savings, whatever, right? Just if I had four years to do, uh, whatever, like, I'm just like imagining what could I do? You know what I mean? Cause now I can do almost whatever I want at the same professional level that I normally work at, right? Except now I don't have to do it for somebody else. I'm doing it for myself, right? Um, and it's, and that's it's definitely possible. And it's a great option if you can afford it. Oftentimes, that's not, that's not an option for most people, I would say, just because, you know, like we got to feed our families and ourselves, you know? Uh, so it's a little bit harder to kind of do that. And, you know, that's just the, that's just the reality that we live in. And, you know, it's, it's, um, I think it'd be cool. Um, but if you are working, if you're somebody that is employed, it's like, you know, you can learn little by little because now you're not on the deadline that you used to be on when you were in school. You know, when we were in school, it's like, I need to get a job as fast as I can, because if I don't, if I don't find work, then I'm, you know, I'm going to be homeless or whatever. But now that you have a job and you have time, you know, you have the ability to kind of slow down and just learn things one month at a time, get one thing better. And it doesn't even have to be outside of work hours. You just have to not impede your work's performance. And that's actually not as hard as you might think. You know, it's just like just perform at the normal speed that they need you to perform at uh, and slowly kind of add in little things here and there to make that uh, process just a little bit better. Right. So. That's what I recommend. I don't, uh, you know, do do with that information as you will. <laughs> uh, Kibachi says, uh, how do you deal with work and personal projects? I have a hard time to do my own things while trying to perform at my profession. Yeah, that's difficult. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. 
like this right here, this personal project that I'm doing, right? See, yeah, right? Um, you know, I, I, I was having a hard time doing that for a while, like, because uh, I, I said this in, in, a, in an earlier uh, um, uh, stream where I was like, oh, yeah, this is my personal project because I felt like a lot of my work was getting kind of stale and I just needed something new. Um, but I was like, I'm, I'm also just turn on a camera. You know what I mean? I just, just turn on a camera and just do it. You know what I mean? Um, and that, um, I think for me is, has been helping a lot because now, you know, it's, uh, I'll work during the day and then there's, you know, you guys are motivation for me to kind of keep doing stuff because in reality, if I wasn't doing this live stream right now, I would probably be playing games, watching a movie, doing whatever. Not, 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 not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, I wouldn't be hitting the goals that I'm trying to hit. Right. Um, and that's really all it is. Um, when I first started working, there's this big gap where I was, uh, I was working full time and I was like behind the ball. Like I was just, wasn't the, at the quality that I needed to be at. Right. Because, you know, I was, I was new, right. Which is, you know, pretty standard, um, you know, for, for us normies. Right. Um, but because of that, I, I wasn't able to do personal work and the, and the work that I was doing, I couldn't show because, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, production work. You can't show that. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do? So what I did was I spent, you know, one hour, 30 minutes, whatever it is, a day, every day doing a painting, right? And I'll even show you the painting I was doing. Uh, it took me like two or three months. Um, Um, where are you? It used to be like my top painting. Now it's like somewhere in the bottom because screw it. <laughs> what the hell is it? Is it not, oh, here it is. Yeah, it is my top painting. Okay, cool. It's in my it's in my illustration section in my uh, my uh, my website. But anyway, it's right here, and it took me like four or five months to finish this. And I did, I, you know, I, I VR sculpted it because I, I, I was trying to learn how to use VR at the time because Gravity Sketch was like a big deal. Everyone was doing it. And I was like, all right, screw it. I'll, I'll try it out, you know? <clears throat> and uh, June was a huge inspiration for me at the time. I mean, still is, but, you know, uh, at the time I was, I was trying to paint like him. And I was like, cool, let me just do a bike and a girl and just do something sci-fi, right? And I just did something. And little by little, it took me ages like you know one you know i would do li little things here and there just whenever i could and because of that after a while you know i got a painting that i was kind of happy with and then i did another one after that that took me a little bit less time but the whole point is you're not going to be able to perform at the same speed that you always perform at you know um you're just not you just can't because you know there's there's just no way right um but you can chip at things little by little. And as long as you're consistent about it, you'll get somewhere, right? I'm not saying this painting is amazing, but it was the best thing I could do at the time. And um, I'm really happy that I just kind of took an hour or two hours to do it. And then weekends, you know, maybe I spent a little more time on it and stuff like that. Um, but something that really helped me a lot, whenever I started working, I was having a hard time working when I got home because, you know, you're thinking, concepting all day and you're fried, and you're going to have to do that again when you get home, that's psychotic. You know what I mean? Like, you're burnt out, and you're trying to do it again. That's psychopath behavior, you know? But what I started doing was, I would, like, plan my stuff in the morning as I'm driving in traffic. I would be thinking and writing and just doing it. Like, I was like, oh, I need to do this ship. Uh, I'd find some reference if I'm tired that day, or whatever it is. Just, just small things that really don't take that long right? It's not that hard. It's not really that labor intensive, uh, but just finding reference, doing what you need to do. And because of that, I set up my Saturdays to then be pr uh, productive because I, I bet you a million bucks for everybody here. It was probably cool. I worked Monday through Friday. Let's sit down and paint, right? And then you sat down, you're like, I don't know what I'm painting. And then you spent all day. And then all of a sudden it's like 12 o'clock at night. You're like, shit, I got to go to sleep. I didn't do anything today, but now you have an idea. You know what I mean? And that's kind of where uh, I was. I, that's where I was a lot of the time because I just, I couldn't do it. I, you know, just, I'm not, I'm, I'm human, right? And so 
I plan out my sketches during the week, maybe do loose sketches or whatever. And then Saturday, I had a very effective Saturday. I would actually paint a lot because I was a little more full of energy. Um, I, you know, I was doing things that, you know, kind of, you know, I was able to kind of uh, handle that just a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So uh, little things like that really, really do go a long way. Uh, it's about being strategic for, uh, you know, organizing yourself and um, putting your energy where you can. Uh, because you only have so much energy, you don't have so much time, but it doesn't mean you can't be efficient about it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Omar says, uh, how old were you when you got your first concept art job? I was 22. Um, so definitely on the younger side, I will say. Um, I mean, I wasn't that young. You know, I've, I've met 18 year olds that have gotten jobs before me. Um, but yeah, I, I was 22 when I, when I first got my job first concept art job so that's that's pretty cool pretty fortunate for that one um yeah so uh it took me yeah because I, I i went to school uh because i went to university of houston for college and then i i left that to go to noman uh noman school of visual effects and then uh from there um i uh, i was a, basically a full-time student and then i started going to brainstorm um uh and taking classes there so pretty um yeah that's that's, that's kind of basically about what i did all right cool sick all right guys well uh we're kind of getting to a point if there's any last questions you know definitely feel free to holler it out but we are wrapping up right now i'm just kind of like I'm just weathering this down a little bit. And I spent a little more time on this just because I kind of want to show you where I would go with a lot of this, right? Where um, I think, you know, the, the it's really hard to kind of see like how I do some of this stuff because, you know, I'll, um, I'll just paint it on the side or I'll paint it uh, off stream and then show up like, oh, hey, here's the thing, you know? But I kind of wanted to spend my time to, to kind of do this because... I wanted to show everybody like, oh, this is how I build it, right? I'm building it like normal. Like I design it and then I do the weather pass. And it's nice because I'm not ruining the original design anymore, right? Like I can move on. You're making other versions. And now instead of thinking about the overall design, now I can think about the weathering pass that happened with this weapon, whatever it is, right? And it allows me to, to free up my mental space to then do something else, right? Like I'm able to kind of focus a little bit less on certain things right so um that's really about how i go about it and then basically just rinse and repeat and as you saw before right it's a lot of like take this piece put it where you need to put it right something like that or whatever right and then you do the same thing again and you duplicate it and you do the same thing again and you duplicate it right over and over again you can see how this uh this process the paintings really do finish themselves um, you just have to be a little bit smarter about what pieces you're doing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take the rest of this to, to finish or, you know, whatever, whatever I do with it. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully this is a, uh, this is a little bit slower of a stream. And, you know, if you didn't like that, you know, we'll, we'll go back to our normal scheduled uh, shit talk uh, a little bit later. But, um, you know, I, I kind of wanted for one, talk about my thought process when I'm giving critiques and showing, um, you know, the different questions that i ask during those because that's important right a lot of those things matter and then now it's slowing down rendering something actually making something worth um you know i guess uh looking at right because it can be very daunting to be like i have to clean all that up that's oh my god you know what i mean like if someone said you needed to fix all of that i mean you'd kind of die inside or i feel like i would um, but just do one piece at a time right just get your focus and move it to here. This is, you know, I was working on this for an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes at this point. And, you know, an eight hour day, how, how much do you think I would get? So, you know, I'm just, I'm going to kind of keep doing that, but uh, that's the idea, you know, so. Oh, um, so I do have some news. Uh, not news, just some updates on things. Um, I'm going to be out of town this next coming week and the week after that. So we're not going to be having live streams for this uh, next two weeks, right? Um, Thanksgiving slash various things. Um, so uh, for everybody participating, right, I'll still be giving you feedback weekly inside of the Discord. I'll still type it if you want to hold on to it and just, you know, enjoy your holiday or whatever it is. Do what you want to do. Um, but for those, yeah, for those of you who are participating, uh, definitely, you know, keep throwing it in. Keep doing what you're doing. 
um, and uh, I'll, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be coming back. Uh, when let me let me look at my calendar real quick. Wait, um, where is my calendar? So we're going to be off the 21st and the 28th, right? So our next live stream date is the 5th. Um, I'll announce it. I'll make a bigger deal of it or whatever. Uh, but it's going to be on the 5th. We're going to get into another thing. Another reason why I kind of slowed down today uh, to kind of render one thing was because I didn't want to start something new and then wait two weeks to kind of uh, be able to kind of see that. Um, so uh, just just ta- I was just taking this a little bit further just so we can kind of see get context on that. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be off for two weeks. Uh, you know, enjoy your holidays. Uh, say thanks to your givings, you know. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pick it back up. Um, we're going to be adjusting some things, right? Uh, just as a quick spoiler on, uh, on some of the things I'm kind of working on. Um, we're going to be setting up uh, different things coming up in the new year. We're going to finish off this year the way we're doing it. Hopefully, we come out of this with at least a, a nice vertical slice, a painting, main concepts, uh, assets and things to kind of go with it to make you know a good five or six page slice of a portfolio. Um, next year, we're going to have a lot bigger plans to kind of do some things uh, that are with a little more engagement, a little bit more um, uh, like a more of a class structure. So if you are looking to participate in this um, and you want you want you know a uh, uh, I guess a an art education, so to speak, in this kind of live stream format. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, please join my Discord if you haven't already, right? Um, it is, uh, you know, that's kind of where it's going to be operated out of. Um, as I kind of release things, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on how I'm going about it. Um, but there is going to be some new things. It's not going to be a 10-week structure. I do feel like this is a little bit long and the, the, intent, the attention span, uh, I feel like can wane after like a 10-week period. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of set up a thing where you get paint overs, uh, feedback, stuff like that. So just prepare for that. If you, uh, uh, just, you know, if you have a schedule coming up for the new year, just know that's coming. If you did want to participate, right. Uh, I'd love to have you, obviously you don't cancel your plans, do, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, uh, hopefully we can just kind of level up together and, and just kind of show you how, you know, a professional, uh, concept artist slash viz dev artist kind of goes through, uh, my my day to day routine at a studio. So, uh, with that in mind, guys, um, you know that's that's all I got. You know, this is uh, hopefully this is pretty helpful. A little bit of insight on some of the back end things that I'll do um, when it comes to uh, feedback and uh, rendering itself. Um, I'm going to be taking this to finish probably maybe not this week specifically or the next week, but I'll be I'll, I'll be kind of working on it intermittently, and uh, you know I'll show you kind of where I get it. Uh, with that in mind, um, yeah, you know, I'd love for you to join the Discord. So if you're looking for that, you know, find my Instagram or go to the About Me section in the uh, in the YouTube. You know, uh, click click the links. Uh, it'll, it'll lead you to where you need to go. Just just read it. You'll see it. And then uh, from there, that's all. That's all I got. So yeah, see you guys next week. Really appreciate uh, everybody watching.